So noting that the time is 532 on this, the 63rd anniversary of the founding of NASA. I couldn't find a good inspirational quote, but I wanted some good news. So there you go. I'll call this meeting to order. Thank you for joining us for the regular meeting of the County of San Diego's Independent Redistricting Commission. I'll begin by asking the IRC clerk, David Hall, to provide additional information about today's meeting. David. Thank you, Chair Beam. At this time, I will invite any members of the public who wish to provide oral testimony during today's meeting to please review the instructions posted on the redistricting website at sandiegocounty.gov slash redistricting. We ask that individuals who wish to submit uh, to speak submit an online request to speak form in advance for planning purposes. All timely requests to speak from the public made at today's meeting will be honored. In addition, agendas, minutes, and supporting materials for the Commission's meetings are posted on the redistricting website, including instructions to request translation. Meeting agendas are translated into Spanish, Vietnamese, Chinese, Filipino, Arabic, Japanese, Korean, and Laotian, as required by law. Chair Bain. Thank you very much, David. The next item on the agenda is the roll call. David, could you please call the roll? Thank you, Chair Bain. Before I call the roll, I'd like to note for the record that all commissioners are participating via teleconference. As such, all votes will be handled by a roll call vote. I'll ask the commissioners to please unmute your microphone and say here or present. Chair Bain? Here. Vice Chair Katarina? Vice Chair Garcia? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Chen? Here. Commissioner Diaz? Here. Commissioner Dostal? Commissioner Hansen? Here. Commissioner Inman? Here. Commissioner Krugliak? Here. Commissioner Larson? Here. Commissioner Pons? Commissioner Russ? Here. Commissioner Serban? Thank you, Chair Ben. Thank you, David. Before we begin, let me just point out, as I'm sure you're all aware, we've got a very interesting but somewhat complicated agenda with a, a series of moments where I'm going to do a little bit more introduction uh, than I normally do. And I do note Co-Vice Chair Katarina just joined us for the record. Um, so bear with me. We'll get through this as expeditiously as possible. The next item is non-agenda public communication speakers. This is an opportunity for the public to address the commission on subject matters within the commission's jurisdiction, but not an item on today's agenda. Let me take a moment, however, to address some good points that have been raised in previous meetings by Commissioner Hansen and others. It remains true that the informal, only formal action the commission may take on non-agenda public comments during our meetings is a referral to staff and that the IRC cannot vote on any non-agenda items. Commissioners can ask staff to follow up on any questions and can request add items for consideration at a future meeting. We can follow up though on public comments in several different ways. For comments on agenda items, we can ask clarifying questions and engage in dialogue with the speaker from the public. This after some review by council and others. The only limitation on that kind of engagement is on the time limits for engaging any one speaker so that we can make sure the same courtesy is provided to each speaker. That's something uh, Clerk Hall and I will continue to monitor carefully. We can also respond in the same way to e-comments that are received on specific agenda items. For comments on non-agenda items, as I said, whether verbal or in e-comments, we need to be a little more careful and limit ourselves only to clarifying questions. Commissioners already know that we have to notify the public in advance of any topics that we plan to discuss in a fulsome way, as we do when the IRC agenda is posted in advance. And of course, on any public comment, we can always follow up, again, whether or not it's on a specific agenda item, by asking staff to follow up or by adding the issue to future agenda items. I know we all appreciate the work of our clerk, David Hall, in letting us know the number of speakers that are requesting to speak on each agenda item, his flexibility in finding out if people who didn't let us know in advance have a chance, are interested in speaking, and in letting us know the number of e-comments received on any given topic. So with all that in mind, David, and again, with our thanks for all your contributions, do we have any members of the public who wish to speak tonight on non-agenda items? 
Thank you, Chair Bain. We did not have any members of the public who requested to address the commission in advance on non-agenda public communication. But if any member of the public present would like to address the commission on issues not appearing on today's agenda, please raise a virtual hand at this time by clicking the raise hand button on Zoom or by pressing star nine if you're dialing in by phone. Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to note that the commission received nine e-comments that were distributed to the commission by email and posted on the IRC website with today's meeting materials as correspondence received. One of the nine re, uh, pertains to item six on today's agenda, and I'll call that out, out again when we get to item number six. Also, the commission's log of ex parte communications has been updated on the IRC website. And seeing no request to speak, that concludes public comment on non-agenda public communication, Chair Bain. Thank you very much, David, for that, and as always, all your great work. The next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the July 8th, 2021 regular meeting. David, are there any requests to speak on this item from the public? No request in advance of today's meeting. If any member of the public present would like to address the commission, please raise a virtual hand at this time. Seeing no request to speak, this concludes public comment on this item. Very good, thank you. Are there any clarifying questions or comments from commissioners about the minutes. Very good, as this is an action item that requires a motion before any discussion, is there a motion to approve the minutes from July 8th, 2021? So moved. Commissioner Chen, second. Second. second from Commissioner Larson, thank you very much. Any discussion? I will just note uh, in the category of no de detail too small, there is one reference, and I thought I had marked it, but maybe I didn't, to Chair Minbame rather than Chair Bame. Aha, it's in 10B. Barbara, I'll just ask that for the record if we can change it to Chair Bame because I really do appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. Any other discussion or comments on the minutes? Very good. David, please call the roll for a vote. Thank you, Chair Bame. I will note that the commissioner's names will continue to be called at random for votes. And we will begin today with Chair Bame. Aye. Commissioner Garcia. Aye. Commissioner Larson. Aye. Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Katarina. Aye. Commissioner Serbin. Commissioner Russ. Aye. Commissioner Diaz. Aye. Commissioner Krugliak. Aye. Commissioner Hansen. Aye. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Dostal. And Commissioner Pons. Chair Bame, that motion passes unanimously with all commissioners who are present voting aye. Thank you very much, David. All right. Now we turn to item five an informational update on holding IRC regular meetings in person and the two subsequent items that are related to them. As I said, this is the kind of meeting where I wanna provide a little bit of framework before some items, including these three, so that you have an idea of how I intend to proceed and commissioners can of course ask questions or make suggestions if they'd rather proceed a different way. Uh, we do indeed have quite a bit of business on our agenda this evening. Uh, the items that you see before you and the order in which they appear aim to help us move through a number of related and sometimes overlapping conversations about potential paths forward. Let me know two key factors to bear in mind about in-person meetings in general. First, as you know, current laws and orders, and I do emphasize current, require that after September 30th, 2021, the IRC should resume or must resume full compliance with the Brown Act with regard to meeting in person. Even before September 30th, there are additional considerations for pre-mapping public hearings that we'll need to consider. Staff and Council will provide some more details on that in just a moment. But second, and I, I, I will say, uh, even in light of that, the situation with COVID-19, the Delta variant and related factors remains fluid, to put it mildly. 
Federal, state, and local officials are all, are all engaged as we speak on what requirements and recommendations for in-person events will be needed in the coming days and weeks. We'll need to monitor and adjust our plans as circumstances merit. But I give you this pledge. I will not do anything that puts the risk of commissioner's health, or for that matter, the public's health at, at the forefront without thorough discussion to make sure we've uh, understood and thought through the implications. We're gonna be very careful about that. And if it takes a little more time to discuss that, I'll beg your indulgences. So for tonight, we'll begin with a discussion with item five, which continues the discussion we've already been having and add some additional information from staff and council, including some more details from staff about how a hybrid approach will work. We, we deliberately put this item first on the agenda to provide a foundational understanding of the current legal requirements, the logistical possibilities, and as I said, the health and related implications that we face at the present time as we look to moving to in-person regular meetings. In item six, after this discussion, we'll hear from our outreach contractor, ABASD, on the, their plans and thinking for how we'll use the IRC's pre-mapping public hearings for in-person and other aspects of our outreach work. And again, I'll beg your indulgence, your careful consideration, and your flexibility in how we address all that. Following item six, we'll turn to some implications for our regular meeting schedule, this under item seven, by combining as appropriate our regular meetings with pre-mapping public hearings. So we'll try to do both as you've seen in the agenda materials at the, in some cases on the same day. So that's the, the relative plan for dealing with five, six and seven in, in that order. Okay. So to begin, um, with a detailed discussion of item five, let me turn to council. Uh, I know we have Hillary and Marguerite here, so I'll let them go for it as they see fit to discuss the legal requirements and implications, and then turn to our staff lead, Barbara Jimenez, who will address the logistical aspects and other related issues. So Hillary, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair Baim. Um, so just to just to begin by echoing what the chair has already said here, um, we have for now in big bold letters at the beginning of this slide because um, as Chair Baim uh, has already noted, this is changing. You know, weekly, daily, hourly. The situation last week is not the same as the situation today, um, and. Certainly, as we look forward um, to the start of the public hearings, but also to the September 30th date, uh, the landscape may have changed dramatically. And so, um, to echo the, the statement that the chair has already made, we are going to continue monitoring the situation very closely, and um, you know, thinking creatively and um, making sure we are exploring all available options based on the legal requirements that are in effect at the time. So uh, again, this is just the legal requirements um, that are in effect today, and things may have shifted by the time we get to these dates that are contemplated um, in this slide and, and with respect to the public hearings. So the, the guidance is that we've got two separate sets of legal considerations, one, one with respect to the public hearings, which is driven by the elections code, and then one with respect to the commission's regular meetings. The elections code contemplates, um, and we've, we've discussed this at prior commission meetings, the ability of the public to provide in-person testimony at a physical location. And that's the case, e even if there's a public health order that prohibits uh, large gatherings which is currently not, not in effect at this moment. Um, there are um, the, the hybrid approach that Chair Bain was talking about would allow members of the public to also provide comment remotely if um, that can be accommodated from a technology standpoint um, and commissioners may re appear remotely as well. 
The um, commission meetings, which are uh, different considerations not driven by those election code requirements that require some aspect to the extent practicable for in-person public participation, um, allow the commission to uh, maintain the status quo through September 30th. And that's the extended executive order that's currently in effect and um, not requiring a physical location for members of the public to provide in-person comment. After September 30th, and again, that's based on the current executive order, which has been um, already been extended once, the commission has to resume full compliance with the Brown Act. And um, that that is the kind of status quo that everyone was familiar with prior to COVID, where members of the public attend a meeting at a physical location. There's, um, it, to the extent that commissioners do choose to participate remotely, there are notice posting and physical access requirements to that remote location um, from which a commissioner may be participating from. And um, there is some pending legislation that could impact these uh, remote meeting requirements in the long term, but that legislation is not urgency. And so in terms of the short term considerations that we're talking about now, which is the scheduling of the public hearings and the ongoing scheduling of regular commission meetings, um, you know, through the end of the redistricting process, that legislation is um, likely not gonna make any difference. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Hillary. Barbara. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so I just wanted to follow up and provide an update on where staff is um, as a follow-up to the last meeting on the path toward the um, hybrid and in-person meetings. So as we mentioned during our previous update, there are a few um, uh, technology uh, components um, that we are still working on in terms of hosting what we've been calling hybrid meetings. So that's a combination of virtual and in-person. Um, so since my last report, staff have continued to conduct testing um, to determine the different capabilities of the technology at our existing um, what we call mature county infrastructure, and that's the county administration center in room 302. So as I mentioned during the previous meeting, that has the capabilities and availability that best meets the um, needs of the IRC for its regular meetings, um, wh whenever that starts at this point, uh, looking at uh, October. Um, but again, as we've all said, it's very fluid. Um, and this would be once the pre-mapping uh, public hearings conclude. Um, this would include either the in-person or virtual participation by commissioners and the public at IRC regular meetings after that time. And for these meetings, um, we can and will accommodate, of course, the needs and desire of the IRC while complying with all the legal and logistical requirements. Now, regarding the pre-mapping public hearing, staff have been working closely with ABASD, and you'll, you'll hear a little bit more about that to really accommodate the hybrid format for participation in the pre-mapping public hearings and the IRC regular meeting, meetings that are currently uh, scheduled to occur in August and September. And working collaboratively, we're really preparing for uh, commissioners and the public to be able to participate in the meeting and whichever format works best, best to, you know, whether it be virtual or in person. Um, I wanna reassure the IRC that staff and ABASD and working closely with our single point of contact, Commissioner Katarina, uh, we've been scheduling time for those dry runs in advance of the first meeting, testing the logistical details, confirming all the capabilities of the room ahead of time. Um, and I, I would like to um, echo or mention and, and really um, following up on the chair's uh, note of flexibility, um, the experience of the meetings may look a little bit different than what we're accustomed to when you have like an all Zoom format. Um, so, you know, here we can see each other, we can interact with each other. That might be a little bit different when some of us are maybe virtual in the room, some are off site. Um, but bottom line is, is that, uh, you know, the team is really dedicated to making sure we have a seamless experience, but we also know that we're creating this format for the first time. It may not be perfect. Each of the locations may have different, will have different considerations. And so, you know, we really appreciate your patience and flexibility as we work toward um, the goal together. And I will continue to work with the chairs on the administrative details of moving forward at the direction of the commission. Um, final note is 
you know, in reference to the tracking, uh, the rate of the COVID-19, um, working closely to, to keep tracking that, the impact of the Delta variant on our meeting plans. And as you all know, the as of Tuesday, July 27th, the rate of the COVID-19 cases in San Diego County has been rated uh, high by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And the County of San Diego um, is following the latest guidance from both the CDC and the uh, California Department of Public Health and recommending the universal wearing of masks by both vaccinated and unvaccinated people in indoor public settings. Um, and so that is um, something we're working closely with the contractor with ABASD to ensure that we have the, the appropriate signage and notification um, for those public hearings um, as required as we move forward. And we'll continue to remain flexible to make any adjustments that are needed. Um, so Chair, that concludes my update and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much to both of you, Hillary and Barbara for that. Hillary, especially for the emphasis on finding creative options and solutions. Um, Barbara, about the only good thing I see in COVID is that it meant we're very lucky to have you on both hats of IRC staff and health status so that we can have authoritative and solid advice on how to move forward. But I am confident we'll find the best ways ahead. Again, to include maximizing public participation in whatever format we have. And commissioners, again, I appreciate your commitment to supporting that. And I know staff, council, ABASD, and everyone involved will do all we can to find a way forward. All right, before we move to clarifying questions though, in that same spirit, I'd like to see if we have any public comment on this item. David, are there any requests from the public to speak? Thank you, Chair Bame. No requests in advance of today's meeting, but if any member of the public who is present would like to address the commission on this item, please raise a virtual hand at this time. Not seeing any requests to speak, this concludes public comment on this item, Chair Bame. Thanks very much. We'll now move to clarifying questions and discussion. Again, this is an informational item, so there's no specific action before us today on this item, though there will certainly be related actions coming up in just a moment. For now, though, any questions or comments? Very well. Uh, once again, thanks to staff and council as we look to move forward, hopefully, to in-person meetings when conditions are right and arrangements can be made, even as we continue to monitor the current health situation, relevant guidance from health officials, and of course, make sure we are attending to the needs of the commissioners, as well as any members of the public who want to participate in our discussions. Thank you very much for that. And again, commissioners, if you have any questions or concerns, please be in touch with staff to make sure there are on the radar and being addressed. Much appreciated. Moving on then, uh, the next item is the discussion and possible approval of the public outreach plan, including a final schedule of pre-mapping public hearings as developed by Asian Business Association San Diego, ABASD, the IRC's public outreach and engagement services contractor. We appreciate, I know all of you agree, on the impressive work of ABASD on the key efforts to engage the community in the dialogue that will be so fundamental to our work. Let me turn now to Co-Vice Chair Katerina, our single point of contact for ABASD for comments and then for the introduc introduction of the ABASD team for today's discussion. Amy. Hi, Chair Bain. How are you today, everyone? Um, I'm happy to uh, speak to you today um, to give you an update on um, the work that ABSD, ABASD is doing on our behalf. Um, I am um, incredibly impressed with their professionalism, uh, with their flexibility. Uh, we have uh, quite a large group working together as a coalition. And um, I, I can't stress enough um, how professional and um, uh, sophisticated this group is in terms of looking at all of the different issues that we need to address. Since our kickoff meeting on July 6th, we have had over 10 meetings, some two in one day, and in addition, um, have, have 
uh, ABASD has participated in now today, two IRC meetings. So you're gonna get to know them as well as I do very soon. Um, we have covered topics from um, introduction to the IRC, to staffing, to hearings, to um, looking at presentations, um, developing our logo, and um, looking at the meeting structure uh, as Barbara discussed and discussing logistics. Um, so you can imagine there's a lot of cooperation that needs to occur between ABASD and our county staff. Uh, county staff in some cases needs to uh, successfully run an IRC meeting and ABASD smoothly needs to transition into the public hearings and then potentially back again. So um, that's all I'd like to say uh, for for today. Um, it has been a pleasure working with their team and I'd like to turn it over now to Jason, the president and CEO of ABASD. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Katarina. It's a real pleasure to be here and representing the Asian Business Association. Uh, it's it's been um, a delight working with everybody, working with IRC staff, and um, having this opportunity to work with um, Commissioner Canarina on what's become, I think, a really good relationship and making sure that nothing is missed, uh, essentially, and that we uh, are as um, robust in this process as possible. So, want to uh, really thank you all for this uh, opportunity. And with this, here's our plan. So uh, for this presentation today, we will be going over eight areas. Uh, this will take about 20 to 25 minutes in this presentation. And the contents of this presentation will be covering our, um, the purpose of, of why we're here, uh, the strategy associated with it, tactics, uh, venue selection, uh, the meeting schedules highlighted earlier, uh, an outreach timeline overlay, reporting, and then logo and collateral. So why we're here, uh, situational analysis, um, your role as the uh, independent redistricting commission uh, and, and your responsibility for redrawing uh, each of the county supervisorial district boundaries, um, seeking assistance from community partners and outside consultants to aid uh, in the outreach efforts and increasing public participation uh, in this process. So of course, our objective is to increase and encourage a broad and diverse community uh, through participation and input in each of those supervisorial districts through a series of these public hearings. And our proposal uh, through uh, our association is to raise awareness of the redistricting process and promote public hearing participation in each of those supervisorial districts, uh, working with uh, all of our outreach partners uh, throughout the county to communicate with various communities of interest to ensure maximum public input uh, over the next uh, several months. For our strategy, uh, we will be engaging community-based organizations and also business development organizations or BDOs uh, local planning groups, uh, special districts, and other organizations throughout the county, uh, with uh, which are about over 50 outreach partners uh, who are part of a collaborative that's focused on economic and social equity for the Seneca region. And of course, across all media uh, to ensure the IRC accomplishes its objectives and uh, public input is maximized. Just a, a partial list of some of our community-based organizations that we'll be working with. You'll see that it uh, spans a spectrum, uh, not just uh, in terms of service and what they provide to the community, but also throughout the county, uh, this countywide represented in every single district. And then just the partial list of some of the chambers of commerce we'll be working with, uh, also once again, countywide. And this focuses on the county uh, with the planning groups and special districts, um, specifically, um, you know, you'll see your water districts, you'll see planning groups, and sponsor groups. Uh, we do note at the bottom um, that there we are engaging uh, constantly in adding other local uh, municipal planning groups and community councils. So for example, uh, the Mayor Mesa Town Council and planning group, um, et cetera. So those that are within those municipal districts. Uh, this next section I'll be going over will be the tactics, which include the flyers and posters, uh, websites, uh, radio PSAs, newspapers, uh, social media, word of mouth, uh, TV PSAs, and email. So in the community relations and coalition building, uh, we will be leveraging long-standing relationships in our community with uh, non-county elected officials and other community leaders at the local level to provide timely and pertinent information regarding the redistricting process to 
raise awareness, educate, and increase public participation. We know that's a lot, but uh, we will be coordinating distribution information uh, via the email lists of our respective CBO and BDO partners uh, who all play a critical role in this area. Uh, for targeted communications, so social media and advertising, uh, we will be uh, helping the IRC reach targeted audiences uh, no matter where they're located uh, beyond simply delivering traditional legacy media programs, which as many of you know are direct mail, print and broadcast. Uh, our team is partnering uh, with leading providers of audience-based IP addressable advertising solution that spans uh, across four screens, desktop, mobile, tablet, and TV or OTT for those of you that are familiar with it. Uh, ensuring our digital outreach and engagement campaign is, is deploying the very best tactics available. Uh, continuing on the tactics for social media in conjunction with IRC guidelines and direction, uh, our team will craft appropriate digital content uh, for outreach distribution across relevant social media platforms uh, for each district and outreach partners, an emphasis on partnering with those CBOs, BDOs, uh, and groups uh, for tagging organic resharing will be utilized as part of the strategy. I know a lot of you know how important that is having that organic reach as well. And whenever appropriate, paid ads will be distributed digitally to a very specific targeted populations. We'll be very intentional in the way that we disseminate our messages. Uh, these are just a couple of quick examples of uh, 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 sample Facebook post and uh, Twitter post, which includes very basic information. Uh, we wanted to make sure uh, that the information and overall strategy was uh, a lot more broad. Um, and it's a little bit more innocuous in language, um, but it has engagement with a call to action. Uh, continuing on with the tactics, uh, like here's, for example, a sample outreach email uh, to whichever group uh, we're addressing. Uh, and for example, our team working with them, which will include uh, things such as the public hearing dates, uh, their scheduled times, um, some very basic information, but then also linking to uh, the public meeting and then also the community builder tool. Um, and additional information relative to it. So very, very clean, but very precise and to the point. Uh, continuing on with uh, the tactics for public education for the website, uh, we'll be working in conjunction with the uh, IRC guidelines direction. Our team will assist with updating uh, the website and webpage to provide relevant uh, redistricting information uh, for dissemination to all of our partners and for linking to all digital outreach efforts. It's important to keep this uh, as updated as possible um, throughout the process and we'll be on top of it every single time. Uh, Earn Media, uh, our team will communicate all opportunities for public engagement in the redistricting process to all the local TV, radio, and print media and encourage media attendance at all public hearings uh, to the best of our ability. A media broadcast of the redistricting process increases, uh, as many of you know, the likelihood of broader uh, public participation. Uh, we're fortunate in that um, our office is actually located in uh, Kearney Mesa where the majority of all the uh, outlets are actually um, uh, near. So for us, we have a uh, fortunate in having a very good relationship with a lot of the local media outlets. And uh, when we um, have any media advisories alerts, uh, we typically get a pretty healthy participation. Uh, I was made aware uh, through uh, Commissioner Katarina that uh, Chair Bame uh, uh, will be working with um, the commission on um, some earned media here in terms of getting and coalescing groups together to do uh, perhaps some press conferences in advance of uh, some of these um, public hearings to make sure that we have maximized our participation as well. So we're looking forward to working with you uh, on that earned media. For public hearings and webinars, um, we'll orchestrate and assist with execution of the agreed to schedule public hearings, webinars, and other meetings as needed. And through earned media targets and ethic uh, media, these are some of a uh, partial listing of some of the groups we have um, a strong connection with that we'll be working with. We we'll also have public service announcements via local radio and cable television providers. Uh, as you know, some of them are like through OTT. Uh, we do have some of those corporate partners uh, that serve on our board and our strong corporate partners uh, who provide a lot of in-kinds as well. Um, we'll also have local community papers. This is a great opportunity with the commissioners uh, for some op-ed placement. Um, a lot of times our local community papers do work with us on uh, important issues relative to engagement for certain communities. And with that, uh, we're fortunate to have the opportunity to be able to submit op-eds related to uh, hopefully in leading in advance of those public hearings. And of course, um, anything that's provided to us uh, through staff uh, with county media target lists as well. To the IRC meetings and public hearings uh, for venue selection, this is obviously a very important uh, component of this. Um, why and the rationale considerations for venue and time selection uh, the venues are reasonably accessible to retired and older individuals and the working age population. 
that the venues with meeting room capacity are adequate to accommodate anticipated public turnout. And the venues with reasonable transit and walkability scores are relatively close to major highways, freeways, or expressways, and which are accessible to residents with mobility issues. I continue on. Uh, additional consideration was given to areas in each supervisorial district that are uh, closer in proximity to existing uh, district borders, as noted in previous meetings, uh, increasing the probability of being affected by redrawn borders. Uh, they, are, they are close to large minority populations where we're trying to get an increase uh, in population for uh, those that are underserved and have a greater number of CBOs and planning groups. For the uh, venue selection, uh, we did take into account walkability and transit scores. For those of you that are familiar with walkscore.com, uh, it uh, measures walkability of any address using a patented system, uh, analyzing hundreds of walkable routes. I know some of you have used this before. Uh, similarly with the transit score as well, that's based on data uh, in a standard format by um, our public, tra uh, public transit agencies. Here you can see two uh, scores highlighted in yellow. Um, and these are uh, what helped us decide some of the locations. Um, you know, say what you will about uh, San Diego in terms of its uh, mobility, uh, but we picked uh, these two ranges, uh, which are very similar to, um, uh, we built it off of the city of San Diego, uh, which has an overall walkability score of 51.3 and the transit score of about 36.9. So every, uh, nearly every location uh, we identified uh, has a walkability score, a transit score that actually exceeds uh, that baseline. So we're in a pretty good shape. Um, and I think that's a, a notable um, uh, uh, rationale in terms of uh, our choosing. So final notes, uh, we did research uh, disability access scores, but unfortunately they don't exist. Um, but we did make sure that every business and public building is legally required uh, to be ADA compliant. Um, and we vetted that process uh, in advance of our selections. We also look at the 2019 uh, Sandag population estimates. Uh, for the most current projection for working age populations, uh, which happen to be 15 through 64 in our region. And we found that late afternoon and early evening hearings are more appropriate when there's a relatively similar or uh, larger share of working age residents uh, in the immediate zip code population of the proposed venues. Um, all uh, these zip codes for the proposed venues have similar uh, median ages and working age populations when compared to the overall average. And this is the IRC meeting and public hearing schedule that we've proposed. Uh, you can see here, we start with the meeting date, the day, uh, the location, uh, which district it's relative to, the walking and transit score, uh, the capacity of the room, access, the uh, meeting start times, and then the public hearing start times uh, for those that um, are uh, separate of the IRC meetings. Uh, the first one we have is on August 12th, which is a Thursday, and it's at the Mayor Mesa Senior Center. Uh, the GM notes that it's a general meeting as well. Um, this one is in District 3. You can see the transit and walk uh, scores. Uh, the capacity for that is up to 200. Uh, the access that's um, delineated there is for uh, our team and for the commissioners um, and for AV to get set up. And then the IRC meeting start time is at 4 o'clock uh, with a, a public hearing start at 5.30. On the 18th of August, which is a Wednesday, we uh, have secured Benita Sunnyside Library, which is in District 1. Uh, which has an access time of three, and then uh, a public hearing start at 6 p.m. As you can see there, there is no IRC uh, meeting time for that. On uh, August 26th, which is a Thursday in El Cajon, we have the Ronald Reagan Community Center in District 2, which has uh, a, a fairly large capacity at up to 300. Uh, we'll, we'll have access at 2 p.m., uh, a meeting start time at 4 p.m., and a public hearing start at 5.30 p.m. Uh, on September 2nd, we have on a Thursday, Escondido Chamber of Commerce in District 3, uh, and uh, that has a start or access time um, of 4 p.m. and a public hearing start time of 6 p.m. On the 9th of September, on a Thursday, we are, we're at the Valencia Park um, Malcolm X Library and District 4 uh, holds up to about 140 people. Uh, access time for us is 2.30, uh, 4 p.m. for the meeting start time and then for the public hearings 5.30. On August 18th, which is a Saturday, uh, uh, we originally had uh, uh, planned for and still have it with the La Mesa and Spring uh, Valley area. Um, we do want to note that, unfortunately, um, our chosen venue, uh, which was the Spring Valley Community Center, had a conflict um, on that date. So we're in the process of exploring and securing some other venue options uh, that meet the criteria uh, discussed in the previous slides. And then on uh, September 23rd, uh, we actually have three options here. It's a Thursday. 
Um, all three of these venues have been secured. We have the Vista Civic Center, the San Marcos Community Center, and Cal State University San Marcos in District 5. Uh, all these um, uh, have a capacity of over 200. Um, and this is based upon Vista Civic Center, um, access at 2.30 p.m., um, IRC meeting start time 4, and public hearing start at 5.30. Uh, the Vista Civic Center was our preference um, based on all the other scores uh, earlier, accessibility, um, uh, transit, walkability, and all the other um, uh, things we need for the facility. Uh, moving forward into the outreach timeline overlay, and you'll see how this interacts with uh, the chosen venue uh, and our ability to, um, you know, at the will of, of the commission to adopt um, those hearings. Uh, we have here in week one beginning on uh, July 29th uh, with the IRC meeting that we have today. You can see on the right side, we have activity and event uh, where we have our soft outreach, uh, where we contact our CBOs and extended networks. Uh, we, we will engage in the um, languages listed uh, and above um, and begin production of all of our uh, digital and media collateral, uh, including the meeting known as translations and other translations. I see here uh, some of the events. Uh, and the dates uh, start to fill up. And on the very right, you can see the districts uh, that they correspond to. Uh, in week two, for the 2nd of August, we have, um, we'll be updating the IRC website and web, web page as needed. Uh, press advisors will be going out for general and district meetings. Uh, we'll be identifying potential dates and times for possible virtual only meetings and webinars as discussed earlier. And uh, finalizing production of all of the DJ and media uh, assets. You see there too, uh, what's really important to note here, and you'll see in um, some of this outreach timeline overlay, is in the period of August 2nd through 12th, uh, there's a rolling outreach and meeting promotion uh, for the August 12th IRC meeting and public hearing. Uh, so it's really important that once that uh, schedule is adopted, that we're able to move quickly on this. As you can see, that we are going to be front loading a lot of uh, the items that need to go out so we could quickly deploy uh, the assets and materials and making sure that our public is engaged at that process to hit those target dates. I see here for the subsequent weeks, very similar situation. Um, you'll see that the list is a little bit thinner here in the subsequent weeks. So we do intend in filling this out a lot more. Um, you know, as noted earlier, uh, it's sort of a, a, a moving target, uh, so to speak, in terms of how events are evolving, um, their safe practices, um, as the chair noted, we want to make sure that uh, not only is our staff stay safe, uh, the commissioner is safe, and the public is safe as we should look at these meetings and events that we attend. Um, so, but you will see as uh, um, requirements um, start to evolve, we'll start to see these build out uh, throughout the subsequent weeks. Now, on to monthly reporting. Uh, we'll be going over reach analytics and data and survey responses. Uh, do note that information regarding these outreach plans for reporting for post-draft map period will be provided at a future meeting. For reach data and analytics, uh, for our monthly reporting oral print, uh, they will be including uh, a narrative, a summary of the outreach efforts done, a public participation and input received, uh, the number of outreach events, uh, the number of attendees and demographic information for each of those events, information collected um, from a volunteer survey I'll be going over, and a summary metrics of, and analytics for all the marketing efforts, uh, such as social media, website traffic, uh, click-throughs, the emails that get distributed, uh, uh, poster and flyer distribution, reach, uh, TV, uh, uh, TV and uh, radio reach. For the survey responses, uh, at each of the events, we'll be collecting uh, volunteer uh, voluntary surveys. Uh, each of the meetings, uh, they'll be including information such as uh, you know, district, uh, for the meeting info, uh, district uh, date, time, location, uh, the RSVPs, how many attendees, uh, the demographics, uh, zip code of residents, uh, uh, community of interest, the age, gender, um, and so forth. And then for the communities of interest in attendance, uh, educational, financial, government, hospitality, uh, et cetera. Uh, do keep in mind that these are uh, voluntary, so we'll do our best to capture as much of this information as possible. For Logan Collateral, these are the two examples we have for you to present. Uh, we'll be basing it off the county's colors uh, and intentionally keeping them um, as broad as possible um, throughout these efforts. Some of the sample ad material that we have, uh, the, uh, the items are actually uh, gifts that are um, showing up here as well. We, we uh, unfortunately lost animated um, gift capability on sample ads for this presentation, but um, these are some of the digital ads. Uh, uh, targeted digital display ads that will appear to audiences based on their browsing habits. 
Dads will appear on a brand safe websites, including local news, weather sites, sports sites, and general information websites. And we will be intentional in the way that our ad pictures uh, to make sure that they reflect the cultural diversity and demographics uh, within the respective areas. Now here's a sample flyer. Uh, with the approval from the commission, we'll keep um, a certain baseline um, and then these will be done in language um, as well um, and for the various events. So our goal is to, uh, as noted in a previous meeting, uh, keep it as broad as possible or, or a template so that we can uh, quickly approve these and get them disseminated as quickly as we can to the public. And with that, that is the uh, concludes our presentation. I do have our team here available. Uh, to answer some questions, uh, uh, if possible, um, throughout this process. Thank you. Well, Jason, thank you very much. And uh, apologies for not introducing you earlier, um, but it, it's an impressive presentation. Thanks to you and the staff. Thanks to Amy. It, it was more than animating enough and look forward to hearing and seeing you more and discussing more as we go along. Uh, again, commissioners, I'm sure that you know, as, as some of the details are not yet finalized, uh, we'll be having an ongoing conversation about this starting today uh, and as we go right on through the pre-mapping hearings. Uh, let me note for the record that Commissioner Pons has joined us. Thank you very much for being here. Um, and before we move on, let me just note um, first ahead of discussion uh, that the press events that Jason mentioned are very much notional. I think commissioners will have some ideas about that. I'll be happy to talk about it a little bit if appropriate now, and we can kind of go on for there. But the next step in the process, of course, is to hear from the public. David, do we have any requests from the public to speak on this item? Thank you, Chair Beam. We have two members of the public who have requested to address the commission in advance on this item, Mary Thompson and Janine Ericat. We also received one e-comment on this item from Mary Thompson, which was distributed to the commission and posted online. All members of the public who would like to address the commission on this item, please raise a virtual hand at this time by clicking the raise hand button on Zoom or press star nine if you're dialing in by a telephone. I will begin with Mary Thompson. Please begin by stating your name for the public record and you will have three minutes to address the commission. My name is Mary Thompson and I'm speaking on behalf of the League of Women Voters, North County, San Diego. And as uh, you said, our written remarks have been put in the e-comments. Really appreciate uh, ABASD's material supplied in advance for this meeting and this chance to give feedback on the planning for the seven pre-mapping public hearings. We urge you to prioritize these six points in your planning. Number one, flexibility of meeting days and times. Consider increasing the number of Saturday meetings. Number two, coordination of dates. Hearings should avoid direct date time conflicts with the California Citizens Redistricting Commission or the commissions of other cities in San Diego County. Messaging should help people understand the various jurisdictions being redistricted and which session is important to them. Number three, language access. We urge you to go beyond the legally required languages, expanding to reach as many residents in San Diego County as possible. Number four, early and broad promotion. Accelerate the outreach and cast a wider net, such as partnering with public service agencies, using utility bill inserts, and using foreign language news, radio, and TV outlets. Number five, the ways to give input remind people that there are many ways that they can give input without attending a public meeting. And finally, hearing locations. We urge consideration of virtual and in-person sessions in key areas such as Mid-City and El Cajon. Thank you. I will now turn to David, our- let me, In keeping with what I said earlier, I'm sorry. Um, let me just ask commissioners if there are any immediate questions or comments from Ms. Thompson uh, based on that discussion uh, on the point she just made. I, I do want to point out to, to uh, Ms. Thompson that there is a, a hearing in El Cajon. She mentioned El Cajon and there is one on Thursday, the 26th of August. Great. Thank you for that. 
Oh. I had uh, a question. Uh, are you aware of any conflicts in the posted schedule, Ms. Thompson? I was just you mentioned that, and I was just wondering if you were aware of any conflicts. Thank you. I, I went through the California redistricting calendar, uh, Chula Vista City calendar, and San Diego City calendar redistricting efforts. Right now, their calendars don't go out far enough uh, for Chula Vista and San Diego that I could see. It doesn't appear that there's any conflicts at the moment with the California redistricting in this pre-mapping period. I think we're within a day or two at different times. And Ms. Thompson, I'm sure you'll talk to those other commissions to remind them to deconflict with us too. So um, any other comments? Very good. Thank you for all that. Much appreciated. David. I'll now turn to our second request to speak in advance, which is Janine Erikat. Please begin by stating your name for the public record. You have three minutes to address the commission. Good evening, everyone. This is Janine Erikat. First, I wanted to thank you, uh, commissioners, for the time to speak today and also wanted to say that uh, we really appreciate you pushing for more time and getting the deadline pushed and we realize how it's important for the community and just want to say we support you in advocacy at the state level for maximum public participation. I also wanted to thank ABSD for such a thorough and intentional outreach plan that you presented us today. Similar to the things that Mary flag, um, although there aren't uh, same day conflicts, um, you know that the, the upcoming San Diego Commission hearing on August 12th is the day right before the San, the state commission hearing on August 13th. Although it's not on the same day, I think you can imagine that it may be a little difficult to turn people out um, on the same, the right act right after each other, excuse me. Additionally, I believe the September 2nd date is at the same, at the state level is on the same day as the county's planned uh, hearing. So I want to flag that for September 2nd. Additionally, the September Ninth deadline is the day right after the El Cajon, the city of El Cajon's hearing on September 9th. So although, excuse me, September 8th, so although not on the same day, I would be mindful of scheduling them on the same week or the days right after each other. As we know, it can be difficult for people to make time to speak and present about their communities of interest. That being said, I did have a couple of questions about how the hearings are going to be planned. Are you going to consider an appointment system where people can call in or if it's in person, come in and leave their comment. That way people aren't waiting for a long extended time. Um, we really encourage that model. It's really been successful at the state level. Additionally, you know, as you all know, Pana and others in the county are really excited to engage community and have been engaging community for the past uh, six months now. Um, but we'd really want to know if you all will be interested in taking like a group presentation, like, for example, if you have 100 people from a community of interest, do you want 100 people to come out and make three minute comments? Or would you have a few five maybe designated for a five to 10 minute presentation. So I just wanted to bring that forward. Again, I appreciate all of your flexibility um, and did want to flag those dates and uh, those suggestions for making the hearings more accessible. So thank you for your time. If there are any other members of the public who would like to address the commission on this item, please raise a virtual hand at this time. Not seeing any further requests to speak, that concludes public comment on this item, Chair Bain. Okay, and let me just check because Ms. Ericott had a little bit of time left. Are there any specific questions for her that commissioners would want to raise now rather than in the discussion we're about to start? Very good, so thank you both for those comments, much appreciated. Um, very well, so we move on now to clarifying questions, which I would prefer we keep very short because this is going to be an action item and a motion will be welcome to approve the plan and then have a discussion about the plan. But uh, before we turn to that, let me just see if there are any specific clarifying questions, not entering into a full discussion at this point. I have Commissioner Russ and then Commissioner Krugliak, please. Uh, Jason, thanks so much for uh, for going through that. I, I may have missed something, but uh, here on your uh, IRC meeting and public hearing schedule, you know the one one in green. Um, I don't know if you want to put that up, uh, but and I don't have a page number or a slide number on that. 
But um, number one, you say IRC meeting starts at, uh, for example, 4 p.m. And then the public hearing starts an hour and a half later. I, we've never had an hour and a half meeting. Uh, I, I don't understand. I'm, I'm not understanding the bifurcation of that. The other question I have, let me, let me ask them all. They're, they're real short, I think. Uh, you also say on the district GM, GM3 or GM2. I'm not sure what that means with the GM. I may have missed this. And then, and then also, I, I, my question is, like the Ramona County Fair this weekend, are you planning on having like a kiosk at the fair? Is that, is, is that what this is saying? Those, those are my clarifying questions, Chair. Uh, Jason, I know you'll have the answers. Amy will have the answers. But why don't you take what you want and we can flesh it out as, as you prefer. Sure. Thanks so much, Commissioner. Commissioners, uh, through the chair, um, for these uh, meetings, I think that uh, perhaps <clears throat> maybe staff can uh, reiterate some of the. Yeah, the why don't we? We'll come back to that one. Yeah, oh. why don't you? Um, I, and I should have said that at the beginning. So, yeah, if you want to take the other two questions and then staff or council or I can weigh in about the timing issue, but uh, on the GM issue. Oh, uh, correct. So for the um, uh, going to events, the idea is that we would have a yeah, kiosk or a tent or a table, whatever uh, would be provided by uh, the venue, um, you know, similar to like a fair uh, in that regard uh, uh, for whatever festival it might be. And could you please remind me what the second question was? Well, it was about uh, the uh, GM under the district GM. I, I, I couldn't find the definition of that. I don't understand. I think that was, pardon me, uh, the general meeting. So, Correct. so some of our meetings are going to be um, specific to the district, and then uh, the um, the general meeting would just be open well, to everyone. But anyone can attend all the meetings. But we do want to highlight we we are required to have meetings specific to a district. Okay. And some of the events too. I'll I'll reiterate that. Um, uh, some of them will be flyer dissemination uh, throughout some of the events, uh, such as parades and others. Um, so it'll be a mix uh, between all the different events since they're all so different. And then Commissioner Russ, on the timing issue, um, you're right. And while I will continue to hope that we can find a way to have an hour and a half meeting, <laughs> what, we, what we are obliged to do when we have a regular meeting and a public hearing is to provide notice on when the public hearing will start. So what will happen in those meetings is we'll go in the regular meeting till about 527. And I will then suspend the meeting so that we can shift to a public hearing that will begin at 530. That public hearing will go on for however long it requires. I will gavel that shut and then we will return for the rest of the regular meeting agenda. Okay. okay. I understand. Thank thanks for that. And thanks for all the questions. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Amy. Commissioner Kuzliak. Thank you very much for the presentation. My question is just, um, as I plot all of these locations on a map, um, it, it jumps out that there's nothing west, not only of the five, but of the 805. Um, presumably there's a very large and diverse uh, population of San Diego uh, west of the 805. So I was just wondering kind of, I mean, I, I understand the, the order of uh, things that were considered, but that, that seems pretty stark given the what I believe is the population distribution. Um, can you just talk a little bit about that? Uh, sure, we did have a few different mapping considerations. I think um, we may have noted um, in working with um, staff and, and some of, um, and Commissioner Canarina on trying to prioritize where some of these might be. So there were um, some issues with accessibility in certain locations that we were trying to entertain. Um, There's some uh, organizations or at least groups that aren't um, uh, having in-person meetings or not having, um, some of it relied uh, solely on um, some of the, the venue capacity or at least some of what restrictions were in place. So um, we'd certainly like to take other suggestions that you might have um, as we're developing this, it's, if it's of the will of the commission as well to, to make sure that adoption is reflective of what we're looking for. Um, if anybody else on the team has any uh, thing to add to that, that was uh, that are a little more intimately involved in this process, uh, feel free to chime in as well. Okay, and again, that chiming in can be later. 
Um, but Commissioner Kugliak, please keep that in mind because I think that's a, a useful thing to bring up in the discussion. Um, I've got some thoughts on it, I'm sure others do, but thanks for the question at this point. Commissioner Chen, did you wanna ask a question at this point? Okay. Any other clarifying questions? All right, very good. I'll ask that the slide be taken down again for now. And we will shift to um, asking that because this is an action item, I would like to see if there's a motion to, at least at this point, we'll say, to approve the public outreach plan, including final schedule of pre-mapping public hearings, hearings as developed by ABASD and included with the agenda materials. I want to note before I request that a motion on that, that we may have to update that depending on the nature of discussion and we'll make sure to capture any key points or uh, points of guidance for the contractor as we discuss it. But for right now, that's the motion to approve the plan, the final schedule of public hearings as developed by ABASD and included with the agenda materials. Do I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Commissioner Chen, second. Commissioner Brown, okay. thank you very much. Sorry, okay, <laughs> good. So um, let's begin discussion. I've got Commissioner Inman, then Commissioner Chen, and then I'm sure uh, up Commissioner Diaz, and then I'm sure others will weigh in. So, oh, yeah, and then Commissioner Kugliak. So Commissioner Inman, please. Yes, uh, again, thank you for the presentation. I appreciate all the work that you've done. Um, uh, I guess one, one question up front is, uh, I think you used the phrasing San Diego County in, in your logo and in your materials. I know we've always called it County of San Diego. So I don't know, if maybe that's a nit. I don't know if it's a big deal or not, but I, I do know that we always use COSD as opposed to um, San Diego County. So I don't know if it's a matter of style or, or whatever, but I just wanted to raise that. Um, the other uh, question that I had though, uh, again, going back to these meetings, um, I assume that if somebody shows up at one of these pre-map hearings and you know we're doing it for district one, but they wanna talk about district five, that we'll let them talk about district five and we'll take testimony on that and so on and so forth. So this isn't, exclusive, it's inclusive. It's just we're not going to provide a broad paintbrush of the whole county like we maybe would in a general meeting. Is that a correct assessment? Correct. And part of the surveys was ensuring that we understand uh, who we're capturing data from uh, to make sure that it's relative to the district uh, that it would correspond with. Okay. okay. And then in these events, uh, to follow up, uh, just uh, we've got a bunch of things like the sip of Julian or, or whatever these events are. And you said we would have tables or brochures or information. Who's going to be there to do that? Is that a service that you're providing? Or are you going to enlist commissioners to try to do this? Who, I mean, I, I, if, you're, if you're so willing, we'd love to have you uh, come and join. Uh, some of the events look like a lot of fun. I'm sure we'd have a great time. Um, uh, yeah, so a mix of both. It, it will definitely be our team uh, that will be uh, attending these events as well. And of course, uh, similar to uh, what we're having with uh, some of the um, uh, earned media with uh, some of uh, like the op-eds, et cetera, uh, we'd love to have the support of uh, the commissioners as well uh, throughout this process. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, sip of uh, Julian put me down for that. It sounds like it's right up my alley. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I don't know how you're going to communicate that out to people and ask for signups or whatever, but I'm sure you'll have a bunch of willing participants if you just let us know where you need bodies and so on and so forth. So that's that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Let me just ask um, Barbara and Amy, Amy, please weigh in. Um, sure. Council, please weigh in if there's if we're wandering into dangerous territory. But I, I would assume the easiest way to do this would be uh, to provide any requests to attend or requests for details to staff, to our staff, um, and then work through Amy to make sure the right people are talking to each other so that the, the clearinghouse and staff can be aware of where commissioners might be or might be going um, and the single point of contact can kind of help manage it. I, I'm open to however we want to do it. If, if direct contact with ABSD is easier, that's great. 
whatever works. But Barbara, do you have any thoughts on that, on what would work easiest? I'm going to have to defer to council, but following our normal process, um, it would be, um, if possible, direct contact to ABASD would be great. Um, so I'll, I'm really looking at council to confirm that that would be appropriate. Hillary, Marguerite, would that be acceptable in this case, as long as we're keeping staff informed? Um, it, it could probably be managed. I think the, the best thing to do, though, would be to stick to our normal protocol in case there's coordination that needs to be done from a Brown Act perspective to make sure that we don't have, for example, a quorum at any particular event, um, you know, that, that would cause the event to have to be noticed. And um, that I, I think is probably just from a practical perspective, the easiest managed through our, our staff process. Barbara, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> apologize. I don't mean to put more on your desk. We're just kind of thinking through the logistics. I, I think that's probably yeah. the easiest way to Well, I started with normal process, which is staff. And then I thought, but it'd be great if it goes through the contract and try to get out oh, of no, the No, I'm sorry. That's fine. We'll continue our normal process. Happy to help. <laughs> so we'll look to Barbara, Amy, um, Jason, whoever on your team you want to designate and um, you all can work it out. I do note for the record that Ken, Commissioner Inman was sure to reserve his spot already, just in case things <laughs> flew. Okay, good. Uh, Commissioner Chen. I have an observation and then a, a suggestion or request. So the observation, I had the same observation as Commissioner Krulak about none of the uh, meetings being held on the coast um, where we have a lot of population. I don't know how to fix that or what, you know, given the parameters you guys have to work with, I know you have a lot of things to deal with. However, the, the observation is that the walkability score, I don't see that as being very relevant given that we're holding so few meetings and the odds of anybody being able to walk to a meeting are very, very small for anybody in San Diego County. So I would think we could take out that filter. I don't know if that helps us at all in putting something near the coast, but that again, that filter given five meetings or whatever we're gonna have and 3 million people walking really is not going to be realistic for for the vast majority that's the observation the request or suggestion i have um in the collateral we put out when it says you know we're going to influence elections or if, you know they're going to comment because we're redistricting for elections i'd like us to say county elections because i think a lot of people don't understand whether it's a city election or a federal election a state election they're going to come in very confused and maybe have wrong expectations so we could just every time we say election and any of our collateral say county election i think that might clarify for people that's all i have thanks very much for that i'm sure it'll be worked in jason did you want to respond to that at all I know. Thank you. You make a very good point about that. I know that that's a, it comes up often. People are confused between the different jurisdictions as well. And if it's um, a, a supportive or helpful to the commission, we'll also be providing a map um, that shows all the different locations. Um, and then we'll have some other demographic information surrounding that uh, as well. So we'll take into account as well on the walkability and transit scores um, and try to compile that and see if it's um, negligible in some instances, if not, um, and it could be helpful for others. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Okay, let me revise the order just a little bit. So Commissioner Krugliak next, followed by Commissioner Diaz, Commissioner Pons, Co-Vice Chair Garcia. Commissioner Krugliak, please. Um, I had um, uh, just a couple of quick comments. I saw um, Rock Church was listed on the communities, but I didn't see many other churches and we've had feedback from uh, previous um, people who have come to speak to us that um, they had a lot of success uh, reaching out to churches. So I would think that the Center for Jewish Culture, the Diocese of San Diego, any other, um, you know, maybe uh, large group churches would probably be uh, reasonable to try to um, at least get some kind of touch there. Um, I also noticed that in terms of the earned media, there was only one when I looked them up that was targeting the Hispanic population, but that's a, a very, very large proportion of San Diego. So I would, I would like to see if we could do um, target a bit more outreach to the Hispanic population through those means. And then um, the last question I had was, uh, I also didn't see some of our more vocal um, uh, speakers who, who come to us a lot. So um, specifically the, the speakers we just had, the League of Women Voters, PANA, um, they, they have direct access to really phenomenal um, 
communities that we're trying to get in touch with. So I was actually very surprised given their activeness with us already that they weren't um, on that list. So I would, I would just hope that we are taking advantage of groups that are so engaged already. Um, so those aren't really questions. Those are just things that I hope can be incorporated in some way, shape or form. Through the chair, uh, thank you so much, Commissioner. Uh, we'd certainly be happy and, and open to uh, more religious institutions and would welcome recommendations uh, and introductions. Um, the list was a partial list. We do have uh, quite a few more that uh, weren't highlighted. I, we've worked with uh, Radio Latina, uh, Univision, um, quite a few others um, through a couple other larger campaign outreach uh, programs uh, with the city of San Diego and some of the supervisors for um, some county outreach efforts re regarding uh, COVID. So we could also provide that list, but certainly um, a point well taken, especially the demographics that are associated with this. Um, uh, we'll, we'll be sure to make sure that uh, a lot of those populations are addressed and, and um, inputted into um, our outreach. Thanks so much, Commissioner. Good, and we'll look forward to an update on all that um, because Christina and Chris both, thank you for raising those points. Um, Jason I, and Amy, I'll ask you to, to look back as well through our past meetings and past groups who have been engaged with us or have talked about for instance, language uh, issues with regard to certain communities and make sure we're addressing that either as part of the plan or augmenting the plan. Um, I would note that we had a number of uh, e-comments ahead of this meeting concerning coastal communities. Uh, I don't mean to overburden the schedule because I like it, but given that kind of interest, I'd also think it might be worth looking at whether there's something we could do uh, in the extreme west shoreline portion of the county um, with, a speci with some specific attention to the issues raised in those e-comments. Uh, just something to look at and I think we can uh, fold into an update at our next meeting. Good. Okay. So uh, Commissioner Diaz, then Commissioner Pons, then Co-Vice Chair Garcia. Commissioner Diaz. Yes, thank you so much for the um, very informative presentation. Um, I love the fact that you have uh, so many groups um, that you've partnered with in the past. It's a very impressive list. Um, my, my question is how, if we identify community groups that would be potential partners, how would we connect them with you? And I'm sure this um, is a more operational question. Um, but the other question I had was, um, and I don't know if this is a more jurisdictional, but um, tribal uh, Native Americans, uh, what kind of outreach are we going to do uh, with these communities of interest? Even though they're sovereign entities, uh, they are within the county. Um, and so uh, a lot of them are, you know, dispersed, the reservations dispersed in rural parts of the county as well. So I was just kind of wondering how messaging would be different um, utilizing trusted messengers um, as you would in any other ethnic community in San Diego County. Um, and also my other question is, um, as far as mobile ready apps and, and things that if people cannot attend a meeting, how can we provide that input in, in a mobile app version? And I know that probably could be touched on um, at a later meeting, but as, it, as that tool gets more developed. Um, but I would be very curious about that and also direct mail, but I know that's a ton of things um, that I just have like a million questions, but I'll just leave that. Okay. And, but my main question is that um, the tribal communities. Great, great questions, commissioner. And, and all ones we're very happy, I think to either be part of or answer. Um, I, the first question is, might be a little more technical for staff, um, or at least for council in terms of the engagement um, related to Brown Act in terms of, and I don't know that it's, maybe to, I'm overthinking it, but in that case, I'll defer to, to council on uh, the engagement for uh, soliciting or, or getting some input. Perhaps it's just through, um, you know, Commissioner Katarina, or maybe it's just through uh, staff. Um, I'm not exactly sure on that one. Um, uh, the other questions regarding uh, tribal, uh, we do have quite a few um, that are very strong partners of ours that are intimately involved in um, our association. Um, so that is a, 
lack of a better um, phrase, a, a very easy um, point of access for us. Um, and we work at the leadership all the time. So it's something that we um, work with. And I know that to your point uh, very strongly, while um, they are on sovereign land, um, they do interact with us um, on every facet of the county, um, whether it's workforce to um, amenities and utilizing um, other things throughout the county. So um, everything through um, you know vehicle and traffic impacts, um, you're, you're completely right. So that is certainly a demographic that we would be um, uh, engaging with. And then um, the, uh, my apologies, what was the following question? Um, mobile app or some kind of, uh, if you can't attend a meeting, how would we provide that input? Or would that be a feature that would be um, looked into? I know we, we had a presentation, I think from another city, a Sunnyvale that um, did something similar, um, but I was just, wondering if that was contemplated or maybe that's something that the demographer and the outreach um, team Correct. Would Yeah, I believe, um, uh, I believe, well, that might be a question for us to be able to work with IRC staff um, on the mobile app idea together with the demographer. So we would very likely in terms of capturing the information work with uh, 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 flow with, with that one um, from my understanding. Commissioner Diaz, good? Yeah, thank you. Okay, and uh, just to clarify, um, this is discussion. And if there are things that need to be added, amended, uh, edited, changed, this is the time to do it. So thanks for all that and questions as well as comments. Commissioner I, Diaz? Well, I also wanna add um, that the schedule, I don't know how much it can change from what we approved, but I would like to see more weekend meetings. Um, and I think that's been brought up during the public comment at other meetings, not just this meeting, but at the previous meeting. So I just wanna make sure that that's included and contemplated. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll weigh in briefly on that. I, I do think there's a balance to be struck there uh, because I know of a number of people who have an easier time getting to a late afternoon, early evening meeting while someone can take care of the kids or the family members for a meal than breaking away on a weekend when the family demands may be that much higher and it's harder to interrupt. I, I, I would really prefer to have a sense from the commission on that and, and on that specific point because I think it could go either way. Uh, I do appreciate ABASD's research on what they hear to date as the easiest, um, but I think it's also something that the commission can weigh in on. And if not at this meeting, I think there might still be time for one or two of the later hearings to be adjusted. Bearing in mind though, these are facilities that are in demand, at least at the moment. Um, and we do have that overarching question of in-person hybrid and virtual meetings to consider. But Commissioner Diaz, thank you for bringing up and for weighing in on it, it's much appreciated. All right, Commissioner Pons, then Co-Vice Chair Garcia, then Co-Vice Chair Katarina. Commissioner Pons. Thank you, Chair Bain. Uh, first, let me apologize to my fellow commissioners for being tardy. Um, thanks for the brief, outstanding strategic level at the tactical level and the tactics and the techniques associated with it. My question goes to the process regarding the monthly reports. I mean, they don't seem to be timely enough for us to make in-stride adjustments based on the meetings that we will have had. So I would ask that we consider having a, a an after action type in the meetings and make any adjustments and then let the monthly report be a collation of the after action reports. But I just don't think a monthly report will do the meetings justice and gives us time to make the adjustments needed to make the follow on meetings uh, quality meetings. And then the second question is, who has access, Chair Bain, to the reports? Are they posted on the website, public, uh, or is it just for the commissioners? Jason, do you want to go first? Uh, if I may, Commissioner uh, Pons, you, you broke up through a, a short portion of it. Could you please um, uh, restate the, the request regarding um, the timeliness of the reports? 
Yes, the periodicity for the reports, if I understand, is monthly, right? Is that correct? Correct. Okay, I don't think that's sufficient enough time to give us the opportunity to adjust between meetings because we are having like four meetings and something, uh, I think we should have some sort of tool in there so we can make adjustments to accommodate future meetings. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation would be that maybe you create an after action report after every event, make it available to the commissioners so we can make those adjustments. And then the monthly report will include the after action reports of those previous meetings. Thank you so much. Definitely we will take that um, into consideration and I think that sounds very reasonable. And the second question was for Chair Bain. Right. And um, I'll, def uh, I'll want staff and council to make sure I've got this right, but my assumption would be we would post at least the monthly reports, if not after action reports as well, with uh, appropriate attention to detail uh, and privacy concerns as, as might be raised. But I would assume this falls in the line of being as transparent as possible with the public. Barbara Hillary, do I have that right? Correct, Chair Bame, and, and I would also add that with the uh, ABASD doing uh, presentations at, at every meeting, that of course is all public, the, the updates at the um, every meeting for the full IRC, um, and then anything that's provided to the commissioners would of course, we're, we're happy to post on the uh, website, um, on our RSC website, um, whether it's with the agenda packet or anything else, and, and I'm not sure if Hillary was, was going to add uh, anything, but that's that's the plan. Nope, Barbara, you've got it covered. We just, um, you know, we manage the, the distribution accordingly, depending upon, um, you know, what the, the substantive request is. Okay. So, um, Commissioner Pons, I think certainly for the monthly reports, we'll be doing that. Uh, I'll ask ABASD to work with Co-Vice Chair Katarina on what else might be done in the interim, both in terms of collecting the information, but also making sure it's circulated in the right way uh, probably through staff, Barbara, uh, so that if there were lessons to be learned be from one public hearing to another, especially if they happen to fall between our regular meetings, commissioners had access uh, and information on it. So more to follow on that, but thanks for raising that. Thank you. Co-Vice Chair Garcia. Thank you. <clears throat> and um, I also want to um, thank uh, the ABASD for um, this very informative presentation. Um, I and I want to also say I'm impressed, especially by the um, the list of soft outreach events. Um, and my first question, I guess, has to do with um, the the schedule. Um, and I'm wondering if you can respond to that issue of, of only one Saturday meeting out of seven. Um, and I appreciate what Chair Bame said about um, Saturdays being difficult for some people, but what we have now is six evening meetings during the week and only one Saturday meeting. Um, and I, I um, would like to second uh, Commissioner Diaz's comment, I, I think, it wouldn't be unreasonable to perhaps um, uh, switch out one of the evening meetings um, for a Saturday meeting. And then at least one third of our meetings would be, or close to one third of our meetings would be um, on a weekend. So I'm just wondering if you can respond to, to a schedule with only one Saturday. Thank you, Commissioner Garcia. Uh, yeah, we, we do have some um, on this. Uh, I do have a DevTel partners, one of our subs who are on the call who uh, might have a little uh, more enlightenment on this um, if they'd like to chime in at all. Thank you, Jason. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is TJ. I've uh, kind of had my screensaver on the whole time, but it's good to uh, finally show my face here for a moment. Um, we actually uh, developed that draft schedule and coordination with Commissioner Katarina and IRC staff uh, based upon one of the things we were being very sensitive to was the uh, demands on the commissioners themselves as well. Uh, each of you has a number of uh, meetings that you have to do over that period of time that we're, we're covering here this evening. 
Um, and so that's why the agendizing of the public hearing during a regular meeting. Um, if, if we decided to, uh, I believe it is four, four of the regularly scheduled IRC meetings have a public hearing component to them. Mm -hmm. um, to accomplish potentially what some are suggesting this evening, uh, we can do it, but it might require uh, four purely public hearing meetings in addition to, uh, so you would have your four regularly scheduled meetings and then se seven separate public hearing committee meetings. So you'd have a total of 11 meetings as opposed to what we have here, which is seven. Okay. Um, I, I'm not suggesting that we change all, you know, that we move all of the public hearings to a date other than uh, the public, the I, re regular IRC meeting, but perhaps one of them. There's the first um, general meeting is in district three, physically in district three, and then there's a second one in district three, and they're both in the evening. So one option would be that the second district three meeting understanding that the first one is actually considered a general meeting, um, but one is actually being physically held in, both are going to be going to be physically held in district three, that one of them could perhaps um, move to a Saturday. So I'm just suggesting um, that we might be able to do better than just one Saturday meeting, um, given what we've heard um, from public comment tonight, and, and just my own um, sense of that as well. Um, Rosette, do you mind if I interrupt you for just a sure. moment? Because we've got TJ there. Let me just ask uh, other commissioners. Is there a sense one way or the other about shifting one meeting to Saturday or maybe even adding a an eighth meeting on a Saturday? Um, I know we've got two commissioners who've already weighed in on that as well as members of the public, but are Saturdays a, a matter of particular interest for anyone or something you'd much rather see us stay with the one Saturday meeting as planned? I, I'd like to add something if I may, Chair Bain. And then Commissioner, um, yeah. So we did, we did uh, consider uh, a lot of these issues as you can imagine. And um, one of the things that we, we felt we absolutely had to do first was have seven meetings in, in, with an in-person component. That's our legal requirement. However, um, we also recognize that, for example, there isn't a meeting in, in the far eastern counties, right? And so we said, well, we could do other things, uh, host a workshop, we could have another public meeting, um, we could have a virtual public meeting to try to target the rural communities. Um, the things we are looking for in, in establishing these locations was areas that had large population centers, areas that were on borders that might be impacted. So for example, uh, Escondido is a great example of, of this community that was shifted in the last cycle. And, um, and so, so they have been a subject of, of change already from redistricting in 2011. So, you know, I think, I think the second comment I would make is that we don't know exactly what's going to happen. We are establishing these meetings based on best guess and feedback from our community-based partners. Uh, we could get feedback from the first meeting, the first two meetings, and someone could say, we really need a meeting, another meeting on the weekend. And we have the flexibility to shift a meeting, a later meeting, or add a, 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 an additional meeting uh, on a weekend. And, and I'm, I'm not sure if I recall correctly, and I don't want to speak out of turn, Council, but I believe we were advised that as long as we have seven meetings with the full commission, as much as it can be in attendance, and there is an in-person component available, that we have met our legal requirement, but that future meetings may not have to have all of those features. Uh, perhaps we don't have the full commission. Uh, perhaps it's a, a totally virtual meeting, et cetera. So our obligation is seven meetings in person with the full commission in attendance in quorum. And I hope that sheds a little light, but I do, I do want to just uh, talk about how important it is to be flexible and nimble. And I know ASAB and their team is ready to pivot uh, as needed because we, we don't know 
uh, what the future will hold and, um, and how uh, these meetings will be perceived and received. But we do wanna make sure that everybody who wants to attend a meeting can come and make it as broadly available as possible. Thank you for that. Um, I'll add Commissioner Hansen to the list. I'll note for the record that Commissioner Dostal has joined us. Welcome. Uh, I think Marguerite, whenever your camera comes on, I assume that's something you want to weigh in on. I uh, do. So we'll turn to Marguerite for a moment, then Commissioner Inman, and then back to Co-Vice Chair Garcia. Okay. I'm sorry, Rosette. Okay. 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 I was going to say, I, I wasn't finished with my questions, but- I have not forgotten. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Marguerite. Okay. Thank you, uh, Chair Bain. I do want to confirm what Commissioner uh, Katarina, Vice, Vice Chair Katarina has reported. It's our view that seven uh, must be structured as commission meetings. Uh, that doesn't mean they can't happen on a Saturday. So I want to make, make clear about that. That's going to take a schedule change but we have experience with that already. And number two, I do want to confirm once again with what, what Vice uh, Chair Katerina mentioned, the schedule meets legal requirements, uh, but it would be an anticipation that as the ball gets rolling, there would be an extension to forums and events that would be called workshops. And the hope would be that we would have a better sense of a community needs to meet the obligation to have meetings on a variety of days and times. Uh, but it was also my understanding that at least this initial selection was based on basic research that had been done by our consultant uh, that would defend, support at least this initial selection, and then we'll learn as we go along. And perhaps AB, uh, the, uh, the consultant can address uh, what they heard from their community partners. Thank you for that. All right, let me turn to Commissioner Inman because I think he was going to weigh in on the issue we were just discussing. Well, I, I mean, I just wanted to say, I think, you know, from an equity standpoint, just from what we've heard in public comment, that we do need two Saturday meetings. That, that's, that's my comment. Thanks. Okay. So we may very well take that up later um, or at a subsequent meeting, as Marguerite was explaining well, but again, appreciate the input on that. All right. So back to Co-Vice Chair Gar uh, Garcia. Then um, if it's okay with everyone, I think we'll go to Commissioner Hansen and then Co-Vice Chair Katarina because of her SPOC duties, and that will wrap us up. Um, now, again, I, I don't want to cut off discussion, but I think we've got plenty of guidance there. I might have another uh, question or two for the commission to be thinking about. Let, Rosette, let me just add, um, I would like to hear a little more if any commissioners have thoughts on Ms. Ericott's point regarding how we want to handle group presentations uh, and possibly appointments or how to schedule it. Um, I don't know, Jason, if you and your team has been, have been able to give that any thought. Uh, as well as any other thoughts on the rest of the presentation on the logo question and whether it should be San Diego County or County of San Diego, Marguerite Hillary, if you have thoughts on that or Barbara, um, but we'll make sure to tackle all that as we go. So for right now, back to Co-Vice Chair Garcia, then Commissioner Hansen, and then to wrap us up, Co-Vice Chair Caterina. Rosette, please continue. Thank you. Um, so um, Commissioner or uh, Vice Chair Caterina, uh, thank you very much for those um, for those uh, clarifying comments. Um, and I, I just wanna say that um, I, I still would feel better about approving a schedule from the outset that had, um, that was a bit more balanced than what we're looking at right now. Um, and then I had, um, and, and I also wanted to acknowledge that I understand that all of our meetings, um, that, that there has been that attempt to make these meetings um, um, accessible to the public and that it's based on, on research. There's no afternoon meetings because um, I understand that what we've heard is that it's really much easier for the public if, if the meetings are after work, if you will. Um, so I, I acknowledge that and I appreciate um, all the effort and thought that's gone into the current schedule that we're looking at. Um, 
I wanted to just echo, I, I was going to ask a question about the ability to respond to the meetings at the, the, the uh, hearings as they were going, uh, as they were ongoing, and if we would be able to, you know, um, change anything about what we were doing. So I, I just want to say that um, Commissioner Pons's comments, I really appreciate, and I think they offer the kind of offer. I didn't have that idea. I was just going to ask about what we would do if we found that these public hearings weren't, um, you know, succeeding in the way that we thought that they they might. So um, I just want to comment on that. And then um, one other point I'd like to make is that there's a um, uh, a sort of a sample email and maybe a couple of um, documents, sample documents in, in the package that we got identifying um, the person, Lauren Garces as um, outreach representative for the Independent Redistricting Commission. And I, I'm a little uncomfortable with, with that title. Um, I think I prefer outreach consultant or something else, but outreach representative of the county makes, could confuse, I think, the public about it, as to um, the role that that person is playing. So um, just, I think, um, I think that was it. Thank you. Jason, TJ, Lauren, any anything you need to you want to add on that? Sure. Just real quickly on that last point, so it doesn't get lost. Uh, absolutely, the language in that draft email, uh, Commissioner, was just that it was draft. We would certainly uh, fine tune that, massage it with IRC staff. I think the point you make is, is spot on. It, it could confuse some folks. Um, and then I just wanted to also. Um, uh, two other things, uh, uh, Chair Bain, you mentioned it, uh, it did not escape me, I made a note, we will make sure that uh, everything that we create and put out there uh, reflects County of San Diego as opposed to San Diego County. Um, uh, good catch, but I can't remember who originally caught that, but that was a good catch and we will make that correction. Um, that and, and, tip of Julian guy again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ken. And then uh, lastly, there was, um, uh, I believe uh, both Commissioner Caterina and Ms. Leone uh, both brought up the notion that um, uh, the seven meetings that are proposed here uh, fit the, uh, the requirements uh, to start, if you will, get the ball rolling. Um, you, will, you might notice uh, or might have caught in the outreach timeline, timeline overlay uh, in the second week, the week starting August 2nd, we. Uh, mentioned that we would be identifying potential dates and times for possible virtual only meetings and webinars. Um, and it occurs to me, especially after listening to some of the feedback and suggestions this evening, uh, we had already had in mind trying to identify some dates and times for some virtual events, particularly for East County. Uh, but now hearing some uh, specific requests for coastal communities as well, um, it sounds like that would also be a good option for a number in the coastal com communities which by the way, have um, much better uh, broadband access and usage than out in the East County uh, for what it's worth. So actually a virtual sort of opportunity for coastal communities might work very well. And uh, with respect to the coastal communities, it wasn't an intentional leaving them out as much as it was, you might recall some of the uh, criteria that we set out uh, that they uh, communities might be, where we hold these hearings might be located in areas that are uh, most closely to existing county supervisorial district boundaries. So unlikely, for instance, that uh, Oceanside is going to uh, drop down into District 1 uh, or uh, something along those lines, uh, to use a dramatic example. Uh, so perhaps that coastal communities, East County, would be great opportunities to, uh, to work in some virtual workshops and webinars uh, and, and augment the current schedule that's before you today. Thank you for that. Okay, Commissioner Hansen, please. I just wanted to point out the fact that we changed all of our meetings from all afternoon meetings to half evening meetings. And it doesn't seem from my perspective that that has increased the pool of, of participants at all. And in fact, many of the participants are the same ones who participated in the afternoon. Now, I don't know how many people are actually tuned into the meetings. So we never see that number, but I'm just going on the number of people who want to speak or the number of people that have a comment. And we've had a lot less of that 
since we went to these evening meetings. So it's very hard to be to predict how that's going to change anything, whether it be Saturday or afternoon or evening or whatever. And then I want to um, also underline what Rosette said about the name. We want to be referred to not as the County of San Diego, but as the Independent Redistricting Committee of the County of San Diego. So don't bypass this body because we've spent a lot of effort trying to underscore the fact that we're not just the county, we are an independent commission. And that's in, in response to the previous criticisms of the redistricting process. So I, I thought I thought as you did that we don't want to introduce another spokesperson. We want it to be either coming from the chair or from someone who is, is a contractor with the commission. So those are my two comments. Good. Thank you for that. All right. Um, right now, I've got Commissioner Inman, and I'm still thinking Co-Vice Chair Katarina will save you to wrap it up. Um, Commissioner Larson as well. So Commissioner Inman, then Commissioner Larson. Um, I am cognizant of time, so I just want to see if any other commissioners want to add anything. Good. So Commissioner Inman, Commissioner Larson, Co-Vice Chair Katarina, and then we'll probably move to a vote. Commissioner Inman. Okay, thank you. I just want to caution uh, caution everyone about some of the language that I'm hearing. In picking the sites, we talked about picking sites near existing boundaries because they uh, potentially could be impacted. Now understand our job isn't simply to make incremental or marginal changes. We're to take public input and decide what these supervisorial districts look like. So I don't want to set up expectations where somebody thinks that, well, I don't need to go because I'm not near one of these boundaries. That's a false expectation. And, and so I just want to be cautious about that language that I've heard several times. Um, we're here to take public input and come up with the appropriate boundaries based on that public input, not to simply make incremental changes to existing boundaries. So I would caution uh, uh, the use of that language uh, that I heard. So that's that's my comment. The point's very well taken. I think several commissioners have alluded to that and particularly when it comes to communities of interest. Um, and I, I will retain the hope that what we're talking about with the specific mission that Commissioner Inman just described will still have effects down the road, not under our control or under our mandate, but in helping give those communities of interest a forum that may very well lead them to other places to be even more civically active and representing their communities. That's my hope still for all that. But the point's well taken. I think it echoes several of the other commissioners. Thank you, Commissioner Inman. Commissioner Larson. Commissioner Larson. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Uh, following up on the uh, previous comments, I'd like to correct one statement. And that is the uh, coastal regions are probably not gonna be subject to a redistricting uh, as much because they don't live near the boundaries. Believe me, where I live, and I live right on the ocean, uh, the district, I'm in district four, but district one is just south of us. People who live in Point Loma are extremely concerned that part of them are in District 1 and part of them are in District 4. And that's been a matter that's been brought up for the last 10 years. Uh, so uh, you can't just plainly say that, well, we're going to be happy because we don't worry about what's east of us. It's also the north and south boundaries. Thank you. Thank you for that. Again, extremely well taken. and just that much more reminder of the delay we've had with the census data and all the other considerations that are going on. Now we're getting into some of the most important aspects of our work and we do need to attend to that language. So thanks again. All right, uh, to wrap us up and take us to vote, Co-Vice Chair Katarina. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> 
Um, uh, thank you everyone for your comments. Uh, we are gonna take, take some time um, as a team. Uh, we are actually have a meeting already scheduled for tomorrow to do a debrief of, of the meeting tonight. And um, you know, my role is to uh, represent your thoughts and your concerns uh, when we have our discussions and as we go through our um, uh, debrief tomorrow and, and onward, you know, so I'm kind of the middleman, if you will, between meetings or middle person, I suppose. Um, so I, I appreciate everyone's comments. Um, and I think, I think we definitely have some uh, very clear direction um, for, for the team going forward. And um, I know we need to, uh, Chair Bain, I think I'll, I'll pass it back to you to talk about uh, what, what the next, steps is, next step is. Thank you. All right. So uh, as we move, as we move to a vote, we'll have a slightly amended motion that I'll ask uh, the commissioners who moved and seconded to consider in just a moment. Um, as Amy was just saying, there'll be a debrief meeting tomorrow. There is a press angle to all this that still um, needs to be addressed. We will talk about that a little more under a later agenda item in tonight's meeting. Um, but we also have, I, I hope commissioners will keep in mind, several different aspects of the press angle to this to consider that I, I am taking commissioners comments to be, will still uh, rely on the sage advice and action of the contractor working with the single point of contact, which is to say, we'll we'll find the right rollout with them, review it, and keep going and learning lessons from it to ensure maximum attention and accessibility to it. I do want to reinforce one other key point. Whatever the forum, whatever the input, whether it's electronic, whether it's during a regular meeting or during a public hearing, uh, I think we all agree that public input will be incorporated into our thinking as we move closer and closer to the actual mapping activities uh, once we have the data that we need to do it. So I, I want to assure the public, both who are watching now and who may watch in the future, whatever, wherever, however you submit your comments, we will incorporate them into our work. The public hearings are not only a legal requirement, but a very convenient way to pull that together, ideally in person, so that we can have the right kinds of exchange and uh, education from you about your communities of interest and other relevant factors. But I do want to assure in all those different ways of submitting information that are out there and that will continue to reinforce, we will absorb that, whether at a public hearing as such or not. All right, so without any further requests for discussion and no objection, I'll ask um, council's advice. I, I'm thinking we need to add a phrase for the motion along lines of, we're going to approve the public outreach plan, including the final schedule or this schedule of pre-mapping public hearings as developed by ABSD and included with the agenda materials as well as discussed, agreed and informed by our preceding discussion. Hillary Marguerite, is that an appropriate format for a motion to approve all this? David, while we're waiting from your position as clerk, is that satisfactory? From my perspective, the question is whether the commissioners understand what they're voting for in this case. And I think I'll, I'll defer to Marguerite now that she's on. Okay, yeah, good. I thank you, David. I am a little concerned that um, that that's a bit vague. Okay. Um, we don't. Uh, there's a lot of really important substantive comment. Um, I think if we could uh, uh, craft a narrow motion that would allow us to go forward on the twelfth, but bring back a, a plan that addresses the issues that were raised here, the geographic issues and the, the weekend issues, I think it can happen pretty quickly. This meeting, you know, it, it, the presentation was great. There's a lot of thought of it, but I, I'm just not sure we can frame a motion that everybody knows what they're voting on. 
appreciate your comments and David's comments. That's very important. Commissioner Hansen. You mentioned that um, you were going to have a meeting tomorrow and to iron out the things that have been discussed today. Is there any way that we could be privy to the outcome of that meeting? Is there a way that you could share the minutes of that meeting or something it's a very without good point. waiting another two weeks before we know how you want to move forward? I don't know if we can do that kind of thing under. Well, I'm I'm wondering if the commission would be willing, uh, Co-Vice Chair Katarina, I'll call on you in a moment, but based on the advice we just heard, could we uh, approve the portions of the plan for actions from now until August 12th. And that comes with the understanding that on August 12th, we'll have a, a detailed plan with concrete responses to the issues that were raised tonight. Co-Vice Chair Katarina, let me ask you to, let me give you the floor, please. Thank you, David. Um, I just want to make sure we give our consultant enough um, information to to move forward on. Um, I think that um, because we do have a long timeline, um, I would ask everyone to consider approving the plan in principle um, and allowing the uh, contractor to to uh, execute the the August twelfth meeting and come back with a with with a um, with the with a final plan for the remaining meetings if that's if that's a possibility. Commissioner Pons. Yes, um, to Vice Chair Katarina, I don't understand in principle, and that's not against you, but I just don't understand what you mean. We learned early on that when we put the recommendation and the proposals up in writing, we can all read and review it and we can parse it out really well. I think this is so critical that we should table this until we go through another element that's on the agenda while the staff puts together the language that we want to vote on and then come back to it to, to make a motion and to vote on in principle what Vice Chair Katarina just proposed. Could we have something like um, a motion to approve the elements, and I know this is a tiny bit vague, but stay with me, to approve the elements of the public outreach plan that would enable ABASD to organize and conduct the August 12th meeting? Yeah. Would anyone have a problem with that? Marguerite, does something like that, and David, does something like that work enough for you? Because we do have within the bounds of the SPOC mandate, and I think the mandate of the chair and the co-vice chairs um, to work those kind of details as, as process issues. But would that be specific enough given the kind of discussion we just had? Uh, okay, so or if, is there alternative wording? What I'm, what I'm conscious of is if we need to approve something that allows the contractor to work on a, to work towards and conduct August 12th. That's what I'm I really um, sorry, Marguerite. I, I, I didn't interrupt you. I just just a question is it possible to identify um, those particular slides or elements of the plan that are being approved at this point in terms of necessity to move forward. Um, just, just for sake of clarity. Which I think, um, Jason, the, and your team, the slides in particular that I think would need approval are the ones labeled tactics, because that would, I, I think if all those are done, and we approve the plan for August 12th, which means the date and the time suggested, um, would that cover it? I believe so. If we were to do tactics and then in the follow-up to Commissioner Pons's suggestion of uh, trying to return more quickly um, with some of the, uh, the data and then doing a compilation uh, following that on the monthly, uh, yes, we may not have to be that technical in the motion, but certainly. Okay, so that would cover the uh, earned media and uh, website 
ideas, some of the social media ideas, et cetera. Uh, correct, getting the, the baseline for the template. So it would um, include, let me just uh, double check that I'm not um, uh, missing anything here. It would be the strategy tactics, um, reporting, and then a logo and collateral with the amendment to being County of San Diego. Um, Sorry, right, yeah. yeah. I mean, if it, is it everything except for the dates? Correct. So is the, if I may, is the commission looking to, to bifurcate the motion? Is that what's uh, on the table or? Well, what we're really talking about is a motion tonight to get you to August 12th. And then if I understand things correctly, a re slightly revised, slightly more detailed plan that would come to us for a shorter discussion and vote on August 12th that would chart the rest of the way ahead. I see. Hillary, am I am I capturing things correctly and and that recommendation you made? Which I think so. Made? I see Marguerite nodding too. So hopefully we're on the same page. But if it if it is as as Commissioner Inman is flagging every there's consensus on everything but the dates, but this the schedule, it may be easier to pull out one portion than try and identify um, you know every every other portion that's being approved. Right. And 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 I would. Uh, point out a significant change is Commissioner Pons that metrics reported uh, currently on a daily basis, on, on a per hearing basis. And I think we can proceed on that if you are comfortable that you know what you're voting on. Well, on that, I, I'm not in a particular rush to do it because it won't happen before August 12th. So we can have, uh, now I think That's it's right. a great idea. It's a great point, but I don't think I think we can see the format for the after action report Agreed. as part of the August 12th plan. Um, Commissioner Ponce, I hope that's acceptable. I, I just wanted yes. to, oh, sorry, sorry, Commissioner Ponce. Um, I, I do want to just point out to everyone that um, this is a, um, a media announcement of these dates and it would be beneficial for us to be able to announce the dates now. Um, so I, I, I just add that as a uh, wish, um, knowing that uh, we would like to add a Saturday uh, date. Um, to that extent, um, I, I'm, you know, I, I see um, ABASD has their hand up. So I'll let them I'll let them comment on that. But that is my concern only from a media uh, disclosure uh, standpoint. It would be better for us to to disclose all the dates as soon as possible rather than than wait. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Katarina. I, I do agree with with you on that item in terms of being able to put our schedule as as noted um, from the League of Women Voters and from our cross checking of other events throughout the county. We were uh, pretty assertive in making sure that we had no conflicts with other community groups and also commissions. So um, to put ourselves out in front, making sure that we had a solidified plan, I think also puts us an advantage uh, compared to other commissions who are trying to solidify their dates as well. So attacking uh, on um, Commissioner Canarita's points of, of making sure that we um, can get ahead of this as much as possible, but also at the same time being able to, um, you know, solidify a schedule, but at the same time, perhaps uh, entertaining um, one Saturday at the commission's choosing uh, could perhaps be um, a suggestion uh, as well um, to add into the schedule if that would satisfy uh, or create um, uh, some consensus within the commission, um, uh, we'd be open to as well. Yeah. Commissioner Hansen. I like the idea of, of adding to these events, these workshops, and this would be an opportunity to say this, it, this, list of events does not include local workshops that will be established based on your input. You'd like us to have a workshop in your area, <clears throat> contact us this way, because that way we would have flexibility to add something that would be in response to what the public thinks is something we've missed. Those could be on Saturday. 
And I do believe uh, that option is included in the plan. It isn't specifically called out with uh, dates, but it is an option that's within the plan itself. But you could put it in your, your uh, press release now and ask for feedback from the public to suggest times and places. I don't know how, I know several commissioners have spoken at small groups like chambers of commerce or whatever, but we haven't heard anything back about how effective those were. Maybe we, there are other things that we could be doing than just these official uh, hearings. PJ? Thank you. Yes, I, I just want to reiterate the importance of uh, at minimum adopting uh, to the extent you're comfortable doing so, the schedule that's outlined here, we can always add to it, um, as has been mentioned a couple of times before. Uh, but there's also the additional challenge that we're bumping into. To give you an example, we were um, uh, looking at doing uh, a meeting at a location in El Cajon on August 26th. We were uh, nearly certain we were going to get it. It would have been a great location, but it fell through today uh, uh, because there was a, a, I think a wedding or something that, that pushed that uh, priority for that, for that location. So if we don't secure some of the locations that are outlined here, we're also at risk of losing them to other groups and other individuals, um, as has been mentioned. But yeah, we can certainly uh, add to it. There is benefit to announcing a full schedule, initial schedule. Uh, it helps us uh, produce materials more efficiently too. Moving in fits and stops uh, in, in the plan is not very uh, efficient uh, because we would like to produce a number of our uh, electronic flyers, graphics, et cetera, uh, simultaneously. Uh, and it'd just be a matter of switching out dates and times on them. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of advantages to moving forward with uh, what's before you now, at least the initial schedule, and we can certainly add to it. Okay, let me try something so we can try to wrap this up. A motion to approve the plan for the August 12th meeting, including all required logistics, approve the schedule as presented on the slide tonight, which has more specific information than the slide in the package, and again, what we're approving, um, a request for the contractor to provide a revised full plan with the additional details that were discussed tonight for discussion and possible approval on August 12th. Council clerk, does that meet the right degree of specificity? I am comfortable with it, Chair Bame. I think from a parliamentary point of view, given the discussion, it might be well for Commissioner Chen to withdraw his original motion and will restate a whole new motion. That's where I was headed, but before that, council? Um, I, 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 I was just uh, messaging my co-counsel. I think that that will work. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Chen, do we have your permission to withdraw that motion? I would like to withdraw my motion. Very good. Commissioners, are you clear enough on the motion? I'm about to ask someone to move. Sorry, Marguerite. Yes, I would just change the wording, Chair Bain, that the uh, schedule is approved subject to returning to the commission with a fully fleshed out plan responsive to commissioner comments today. So a it would be a subject, subject to approval. Good. I, I'm sorry, subject to uh, a view of full plan. Okay. Commissioners, do you need that reread? Commissioner Kugliak, sorry. You're muted. Um. I really hate to do this, but we've got 16 agenda items on this week's agenda. We're talking about putting another one onto what's probably already going to be a long agenda list next time. Is this something that we can just resolve today? Like, can we move a Thursday to a Saturday and agree to it? And can we decide to move like Bonita and um, Malcolm X or Sunny, Sunnyvale and Malcolm X are within six miles of each other? Can we move one of them to the coast? And can we just like, 
be done with it today instead of adding yet another agenda item for our next meeting? Would that be something that we are allowed to do? Um, and is that something that we have the will to do today so that we don't have to just push it for the next couple of weeks? I, I, I'd certainly prefer that. The issue I think is that we don't know what we would be moving it to because obviously we don't know the venue available for one of those meetings. And um, while the point is, is good that we've got ones already located close together, I think some of the other discussion would require a little bit more homework before we could really vote on it. That said, I would be happy to, especially with agreement tonight, to make sure we limit consideration of that revised plan to 10 minutes or five minutes at our next meeting, which is certainly within the power. I wanted to make sure we had the fulsome discussion today, um, but I, I don't think we could really, given what we're hearing from commissioners and from council and clerk, I, I'm not comfortable trying to wrap this up today. But I promise we can have a very limited discussion, um, particularly because I think the contractor has the input they need to produce a revised plan for that will be responsive. Chair, I think I think the consultant had a comment he wanted to make. Please, was that TJ or Jason? Sorry. Yeah, TJ. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I like the suggestion that was just made by the commissioner. Um, what might even, if we can't identify, I appreciate we can't identify potentially a specific venue, um, but if for instance, uh, the commission said for, uh, for the September 18th meeting, we would like you to uh, find a venue in the XYZ area. Uh, so that we can move move forward and uh, identify a venue in that area for that date and time. Um, that would at least allow us to move forward with a schedule and a general geographic area from which to work that then we can come back with specifics on at the August 12th meeting. Commissioners? That, that doesn't address the additional Saturday meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have mentioned one other thing. So someone mentioned a moment ago, there was the uh, Spring Valley Community Center uh, was is a county owned facility. They had a, a conflict, a conflict on September 18th, a Saturday that uh, they informed us they do not have the similar conflict on Saturday, the 25th. So it could be uh, as I don't want to use the word easy, nothing's that easy. Uh, but we could add a Saturday meeting to uh, on September 25th uh, at the uh, Spring Valley Community Center. And that would leave open a location for Saturday the 18th. Which we could make maybe a North County Coastal event. And, and, you know, bear in mind on this schedule, we did not have every location uh, firmed up 100%. So um, I, would, I, I would be comfortable with, with TJ's suggestion to uh, move uh, the Saturday the 18th to North County Coastal, add Saturday the 25th in Spring Valley. And then we have two Saturdays and one Coastal. And eight, and eight public hearings is what we're looking at. Yeah. We're adding one. I would note that that second one would be occurring after the currently scheduled date for this, the second formal release of data um, on September 23rd. Um, but it's doable. All right, um, Com Commissioner Hansen, you're muted. You're still muted. There okay. we are. <laughs> I trust our consultants and I trust Commissioner Katarina to figure this out. And we're, it's difficult for a commission this size to banter back and forth without any documentation in front of us or anything. I believe that we need to turn it back to them. We've said what we think. 
and let them figure this out for us. Mr. Kugliak, let me come back to you. Um, because I think, well, first of all, let me ask other commissioners. Besides the matter of the schedule and the Saturday date, are commissioners comfortable with the plan subject to incorporation of the comments discussed tonight along lines of what council provided? Okay, I don't see any objection on that. Commissioner Diaz. I guess my only concern is about making sure that we have I don't know, I'm just looking at like South Bay, for example. Okay. Uh, the areas, right. <laughs> I mean, okay. I know We're we have one meeting, but right. I don't want to go. So I, yeah. again, I'm, I I'm, appreciate the comments about coastal, but okay. I'm concerned. I'm concerned yeah. about the agenda on August 12th, but I'm more concerned about the agenda for tonight right now. Um, so Ooh. I'm gonna, oh my. I take it we lost David. Yeah, this is where the vice chair is springing into action and continued moving <laughs> forward. Did everybody oh, hear a ping when that happened? I, I hear you guys. I don't hear David. No, but when David David's frozen. I support Commissioner Pond's suggestion. Co-chairs, go to work. I'm happy to do it, it uh, unless you think it's a conflict of interest of me as the point of contact. <laughs> You're the best person to do it because of that reason, I feel like. Uh, okay. All right. And so until Chair Bain comes back, uh, I Curious. suggest Curious. that. Okay, he's back. He's back. Yay. I still like to hear what you'd suggest, uh, <laughs> Mr. Caterino, because you're the one who knows the most about it. And, you know, I'm late to the discussion, I know. Yeah. So I didn't well, hear all the discussion, but I, you know, you're the one who has the most information. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so one of the things that uh, we've had to contend with in this situation, and I'll try to be brief, is the fact that we do have a compressed schedule and that we've had to play hurry up and get all these things done. Normally, we would like to have more time discussing over very, a couple meetings, but we don't really have that luxury at the moment. So we're uh, hoping um, as we came into this, that we could approve the plan um, and, um, and allow, same as we did with the educational tour, allow the consultant and the point of contact to uh, represent the commission's uh, plans um, and thoughts uh, as we move forward. And I think, I think for sure uh, we should consider uh, adding the Saturday meeting and moving the Spring Valley meeting to the 25th. Um, and we could do the Saturday, the 18th meeting as a location to be determined. So whether it is in, you know, where, what that, what that area is can, can, can certainly be addressed at a later date. Um, so I would suggest we, we, um, we consider a motion with, um, up to approve the plan and with the amendments and changes to the schedule. I second the motion. <laughs> well, I'm not entirely sure I was that okay. was let me, so legal. <laughs> Commissioner Hansen, stand by. Let me see, because that, that sounded very good to me. And thank you for continuing the discussion as I dealt with a loose plug. So a motion to approve the plan subject to re the refinements requested that will be reviewed and approved on August 12th and moving the Spring Valley, the La Mesa Spring Valley meeting from September 18th to September 25th with an additional location to be provided for approval for the 18th, for September 18th. I would second that motion. That motion sounds... Okay. I don't know that there was a subject to anything that would have to come back on the 12th. Maybe we would just be informed as to what those locations are. 
Do I? It's I not, not so much locations as some of the things we discussed, but. Um, oh, the other things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I, I think, frankly, it might be easier that way. If we end up not needing to have any of those refined details discussed because they all fall within the procedural category, I think that's fine. If it's something like we heard from the public that the commission needs to make a decision on how it's going to hear from larger groups, that's something I would want to keep the door open to considering on the 12th, on August 12th. Okay. <clears throat> Council clerk. We're okay. I think the clerk, I, clerk feels like there's enough detail. I'll defer to council. Okay. I also believe there's enough detail there, uh, Chair Bayman. Things like um, uh, procedural matters. I, I think we should discuss it so people are comfortable. But procedural matters of having a group of a hundred represented by two people who take a total of ten minutes is right. a, an adjustment that I think uh, we can make and fairly apply to all groups. Great. And uh, I, I'm not, uh, let's take a look. We got to take a look at this long minutes, uh, staff reviews the video. And it may be that once we get the uh, place, things will go very quickly on the 12th. It's just an update rather than a full debate. Okay. Uh, Barbara Jimenez, do you have that motion in writing captured? Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so, and when, I, I hate being the mover of a motion. Co-Vice Chair Garcia, would you, can you be the mover for that? So moved. Okay, Commissioner Hansen, I know you already seconded, so we'll take that. Any further discussion? No, thank you very much. David, could you please call the roll for the vote? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, thank you, Chair Bame. Aye. Commissioner Krugliak. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Hansen. Aye. Commissioner Serbin. Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Larson. Aye. Commissioner Katarina. Aye. Commissioner Russ. Aye. Commissioner Dostal. Aye. Commissioner Pons. Aye. Commissioner Diaz. Aye. Commissioner Garcia. Aye. Chair Bame, that motion passes unanimously with all commissioners who are present voting aye. Very good. Thank you again, commissioners, especially for the input. And I look forward to the contractor and the single point of contact coming back to us uh, as we go. All right, moving on to item seven. The item entitled Discussion and Possible Approval of Revisions to IRC Regular Meeting Schedule to Accommodate the Final Schedule of Pre-Mapping Public Hearings. I'm going to dispense with some of my more detailed comments and just summarize. The chart you have before you, the schedule in the agenda package that looked like that, is to change our regular meeting schedule, mainly in terms of times, so that uh, they track with the pre-mapping public hearings that were just approved as part of the uh, contractor's plan. So we have changes for our regular meetings in August and September. We have locations added for the regular meetings beginning August 12th in anticipation that those meetings may be in person. As we discussed though, that will be subject to conditions, but you have that draft revision. Uh, we will of course continue an ongoing conversation about the regular meeting schedule in particular with regard to health conditions across the county. So I'll ask commissioners to be bearing that in mind. And again, just a reminder, as we discussed with Commissioner Russ, uh, whenever you see a regular meeting starting at four, that will generally mean it will be interrupted around 5.30 for the beginning of the public hearing. The public hearing will go on for however long is needed to hear from the public. And then we will return to the regular meeting. These meetings will at minimum be in a hybrid format. I could see us shifting to a uh, virtual format. 
I could, fingers crossed, see some of them in an in-person, in a totally in-person meeting. But again, that will be subject to further discussion. We'll see how we do. All right, before we move on to clarifying questions and possible action, David, are there any members of the public who wish to speak on this? Thank you, Chair Beam. No members of the public requested to address the commission in advance on this item. If any members of the public present would like to address the commission on this item, please raise a virtual hand at this time. Not seeing any requests to speak, that concludes public comment on this item, Chair Beam. Very good, thank you very much. Any clarifying questions before we take a motion and have a very short discussion or maybe no discussion? Very good. So as an action item, uh, do we have a motion to approve the potential revision to the IRC's regular meeting schedule as included in the agenda materials and subject to tracking with the schedule we just discussed? So moved. Okay, motion from Commissioner Russ, second. Second. Commissioner Chen, thank you very much. Any discussion? Very good. David, would you please call roll, the roll for a vote? Thank you, Chair Bam. Commissioner Hansen. Aye. Commissioner Diaz. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Larson. Commissioner Larson, have I lost? Aye. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Kruglia. Aye. Commissioner Pons. Aye. Commissioner Garcia. Aye. Commissioner Dostal. Aye. Commissioner Katarina. Aye. Commissioner Russ. Aye. Chair Bame. Aye. Commissioner Serban. Chair Bame, that motion passes unanimously with all commissioners who are present voting aye. Very good. Thank you, commissioners. And again, thanks to Jason, ABASD, TJ, and everyone who just participated. Really appreciate the flexibility and good discussion. All right. We still have a number of items to continue. I'm going to beg the commission's indulgence because I really do think we need to talk about and look at the community builder tool as well as the item following that um, regarding subcontractors for flow analytics. But to introduce the next item, item eight, a demonstration and training on the community builder tool developed by flow analytics, our IRC demographer. I wanna note that the tool allows the IRC to capture key information about communities of interest in both a narrative description format and also very significantly by identifying the community's location on a map. Tonight's agenda materials included an announcement about the tool and a link for commissioners to review and explore the beta version, which I hope you all had a chance to do. We'll have an opportunity to receive training on this, on its use. And I know Flow Analytics has been very patient, Jed, thank you very much. Uh, but I'll ask you to be aware of the time we've already taken. Uh, but I do wanna allow commissioners to explore it, see it and ask questions. Again, we're using the term very broadly here, we, because in this training, we're not, of course, talking only about commissioners, but about members of the public and other interested parties who may wish to look at and even use this tool in the future. So let me turn to Jed Roberts with the Flow team for some introductory remarks. And thanks for getting us to this point and your patience as we go into the demonstration and training. Jed, please. Thank you, Chair Payne, and good evening to the commission. Uh, I have a quick informational update for you, and then we'll get into a demo. So Flow has launched a web tool called the Community Builder to facilitate public input about communities of interest. You'll find a link to that in the meeting materials as mentioned. This is an unpublicized beta launch that is intended to provide the commission an opportunity to review the tool and provide feedback. While we are welcoming comments, any changes to the tool will need to be vetted with county staff and legal counsel to determine if they're feasible and achievable within our timeline and budget. And, and when we've completed any of those changes, Flow will work with ABASD to promote the community builder more widely. So before the demo, I wanna note that there have been two changes to the tool based on early feedback after it was first shared with the commission. First, you should see on the tool that it now has our translated languages available. And second, 
the survey now includes a prompt to categorize um, the community of interest that's being um, submitted. And with that, I am going to kick it to Rachel Roberts to provide a demo of the tool. Thanks, Jed. Um, so this is the community builder tool that we launched um, in the beta version. Um, and I'm just gonna walk through uh, the components of the community builder tool and do a quick demo as I do so. Um, so the first part of the community builder tool is the instruction section. Um, it just provides an overview of the redistricting work that is being done this year. Um, and then explains what a community of interest is and why communities of interest are important to the process. Um, in this section, we also have some links to um, useful pages. So for example, the County of San Diego Independent Redistricting Commission homepage, um, as well as a user guide um, for individuals if they are having difficulty using the tool or need further detailed instructions. Um, and this is all translated into the, uh, seven other different languages, as Jed mentioned. So as we go down, we get into the question section. So this is where individuals of the public can tell us about their community. Um, so for today's demo, I'm going to use the county administration building. Um, so the first question is, tell us the name of your community. So they can type their answer in here and they have up to 2000 characters. So it can be as long or as short a name as uh, they wish. So. Um, and then we get to question two where they are able to describe their community of interest by stating uh, their shared social and or economic interests. So place where. Um, and then we've got our third question down here, um, where we are asking the public to categorize their community. And we have a few different options for them. So rural, urban, industrial, agriculture, living standards, transportation, work, communications and media, and then other, which is a catch-all category. Um, and they're able to select up to three choices. Um, Rachel, why is there no suburban listing there? Um, we pulled this uh, from, I believe, um, county law, but we can definitely add that in if that's a category you think would be useful for people. Yeah, I can clarify. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Chen. Um, we pulled this directly from the legal um, description of a community of interest from state, state law. Okay, great. Um, and then the last section, which is the mapping portion of the community builder is um, where folks can draw their community of interest. So we've got a video that's playing on a loop that shows them how to use the tool. Um, and it's just, it runs about a minute long. And so that's there if they're interested. Um, and then there's also an, another link to the instructions, just reminding them that if they have questions, there is a resource available for them. Um, as we go down the page, we've also got um, the legend. So as you'll as you'll see um, in the next session or next section, we have a few base maps um, for folks to reference if they're interested in different ancillary data sets. Um, and this is just an overview of what the colors on the map mean. Um, and so this is the meat of the tool. Um, so using the mapping interface, people can draw their community of interest. Um, and we can use that button there to expand the map view. And we've got some tools in the upper left-hand corner that allow us to zoom in and zoom out. Um, this is the home button. So this will take us back to the entire county's default extent. Um, and then if someone has their location services enabled in their web browser, um, they can click on this and it'll, the map will um, center in on where they currently are. Um, and then to get out of this view, we can exit the large map. Um, but for drawing a community of interest, it's helpful to be able to see things um, in a bigger screen. 
Um, so we're testing, I'm gonna put in the address for county offices and it'll take us right there. Um, so we can zoom out. Um, and then in our upper right hand corner, we've got what is called the map gallery. Um, and it's where um, we loaded and preloaded in a bunch of different data sets uh, related to different um, categories of things. So we've got education, communities, neighborhoods, um, we've got some census data, political boundaries, and um, zoning data as well. Um, and then we've also got some other supplemental base maps. So if somebody wanted to see the aerial imagery of the place, there is that selection available to them as well. Um, and so lastly, the part that allows folks to draw in their community, it's this polygon right here and they click on it and they just simply click on the mapping interface. Um, and as they click through vertices um, appear on the map and they can double click to finish up drawing their community of interest and say they missed a section that they want to then include. There is an edit button that allows them to oopsies, go in and adjust the boundary. Uh, and then they can confirm their changes there. Um, they can close out of the um, larger map view and they can press submit. Um, I'm going to go back for a second. And show a couple of features that I didn't get to. Um, so at the very bottom, we also provide a list of the source data that we used for this application. Um, and that's here. And most of the data that we um, preloaded into the mapping component of this is from um, San GIS. Um, and so we've got links and descriptions to all the data sources that were referenced um, in the mapping section. Let's see. Here we are. Um, and then at the very top, this is where uh, individuals can choose the language in which they want to take their survey. Um, so we've got a couple options for them here, um, and when they click through to the hyperlinks, um, it's going to be a translated version for them as well. Um, yeah, and so that's our community builder tool, and I'm happy to answer any questions that the commission may have. And Rachel, I'm actually going to make a couple more comments to close us out here before we get to that, which yes. are... Um, that we'll be providing the commission with a roundup of submissions to the community builder at, a, at regular intervals. So at least before every commission meeting, um, each individual submission will be provided to the commission, much like the e-comments e that are currently coming in. Um, and if there are numerous submissions, we'll also make use of that categorization option to provide summaries. And with that, um, that concludes our presentation on the community builder. Well, Jed, Rachel, thank you very much. That, that is truly impressive work. Um, great presentation, by the way. I'm glad someone around here can speak more briefly than me. So Rachel, much appreciated. Um, and, and things like that map gallery, that, where you can just pull down different aspects and see it. Wonderful, wonderful piece. Um, Commissioner Chen, I haven't forgotten your comment and I'm looking forward to other clarifying questions and comments. But before that, uh, David, are there any members of the public who wish to speak on this agenda item? Thank you, Chair Bain. We did have two members of the public who requested to address the commission in advance on this item, Teresa Beauchamp and Janine Ericat. I'd also add that any member of the public present who would like to address the commission on this item, please raise a virtual hand by clicking the raise hand button on Zoom or by pressing star nine if you're dialing in by telephone. I will begin with Teresa Beauchamp. Please begin by stating your name for the record. You'll have three minutes to address the commission. Good evening. Commissioners and county staff, this is Teresa Beauchamp. Thank you for your service and your excellent efforts in community outreach 
on the county level redistricting process. And also thank you to Flow Analytics for your great tutorial tonight. I hope to use that soon. Uh, my name is Teresa Beauchamp. I'm a 33-year-old resident of 33-year resident of Encinitas and have served as a physician assistant in family medicine for over 25 years. I'm a member of Encinitas for Equality and sit on its housing committee. I support a redistricting map that includes Encinitas and the coastal corridor with Solana Beach, Del Mar, La Jolla, South to Point Loma. Our sister cities hold the following common interests. The first, environmental. Encinitas, Solana Beach, Del Mar, South to Point Loma residents love the beauty, exercise, recreational opportunities provided by our coastline and ocean. As stewards of the coastline, our combined political voices have worked hard to successfully obtain federal and county resources to manage bluff erosion and sewage runoff. Encinitas and Solana Beach share guardianship of the San Alijo Lagoon habitat and trail that connects our cities. Encinitas, Solana Beach, and Del Mar are connected by our coastal rail trail, which offers a gorgeous 9.6 mile uh, trail to walk and bike through our sister cities. Public health is our point number two. Encinitas and La Jolla are both home to Scripps hospitals and share a sense of responsibility to ensure the safety of our medical providers and staff by upholding county and state public health safety mandates. This community responsibility has heightened during the pandemic with the barrage of misinformation and dis disseminated that has caused great risk to our medical professionals and staff uh, due to increased hesitancy to mask wearing and vaccination. Third point, racial justice and socioeconomic equity. Encinitas for Equality works in tandem with Solana Beach for Equality, a North County Stand Up for Racial Justice group and the Sister Cities Project. These North County justice allies are primarily located in Encinitas, Solana Beach, and Del Mar. Additionally, Los Angelitos de Encinitas collaborates with Solana Beach organizations that include the Boys and Girls Club, Casa de Amistad, and La Colonia Community Foundation to support our Latinx residents. It is important to keep predominantly white affluent activists with a passion for justice in the same district. My vision for redistricting of District 3 is that this district becomes a north-south orientation rather than west to east. A north-south orientation better reflects our natural community of common interest of suburban coastal residents that share a sense of responsibility towards our coastline, ocean, healthcare workers, and social justice. Again, I'm anxious to draw the COI map after tonight's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, and we look forward, I'm sure, to continued dialogue and discussion about that. David. Chair Baymer, second to request to speak, Janine Ericott does not appear to be present, but if there are any other members of the public who would like to address the commission, please raise a virtual hand at this time. And not seeing any further requests to speak, that concludes public comment on this item, Chair Baymer. Very good, thank you very much for that. Um, we'll move on to clarifying questions and discussion. Again, this is an informational item with no action for us tonight. Um, I think any questions and comments are more than welcome. I would ask that commissioners bear in mind the IRC's core mission, technical feasibility factors, implementation timeline, and of course, budgetary constraints. With that in mind, I have Commissioner Brown, Commissioner Dostal, Commissioner Diaz. So please, Colleen, you are muted. Yes, and I, um, I have a couple of questions. There was a uh, page there where um, on the on the uh, mapping where they can identify the group that they're with, and there was a subject of um, you know a catch-all of other at the bottom. Is it possible to enter a box uh, next to that other so that they could kind of describe? what their group is, because we may have a lot of people in a similar group. It's just not listed as part of the groups that are there. So it that is. was one question. Uh, and let me give you the one. It says, uh, is there the people that are filling out these maps, is there a way when they're giving information to us, is there a way for us to communicate back and forth with them to clarify any questions we might have in the responses that they've given to us or how does that work? Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Um, 
the answer to the first question is yes, and I will bring that back to county staff to discuss. And the answer to the second question is, right now it is a one-way um, submission, um, much like the e-comments uh, e are, um, but we would uh, perhaps consider some kind of identifiable information that we could connect back with the submitter. And I'll bring that also back to county staff. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Commissioner Dustoff. Thank you. I had a question about the um, submission because the first time you did it, I think there was a step where we had to download and there was a great comment from um, Commissioner Kugliak about that. And it looks like that was eliminated, which I think is a good thing. I just wanted to confirm that that's the case. Yes, I can confirm that that is the case. We're able to eliminate that step. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thanks as well, Christina, and to Jed for making that happen. It's great. Commissioner Diaz. Hi, um, thank you for uh, the presentation. My question is, I tried it on my cell phone. It was mobile ready. And uh, I had, some, uh, it was okay. It turned out okay. But I was wondering if there's a feature that could be, if I could save my map uh, for later and then submit, for example. Um, that seems to be a feature that other, I've seen on other tools um, like Draw My California Community that the State Commission has on their website. Um, I haven't used that feature yet, but it's something to consider, think about. Um, that's just my comment about that. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Diaz. That is functionality that we will look into and bring back to county staff to discuss. I believe it is possible. Thank you very much, Commissioner Kugliak. In the hand instead of the unmute. Um, thank you very, very much. I had um, a question as to whether this has been kind of beta tested maybe with older, less computer savvy uh, communities. And I, um, I, I'm maybe giving myself a bit too much credit, but I, I put myself in the computer savvy community, but I oftentimes am trying to grab one of those dots and I end up moving the map instead. Um, these dots are very tiny and um, I don't know, maybe I'm just not as dexterous as I thought I once was, but I, I worry a little bit about um, perhaps less computer uh, literate communities um, and I was just wondering if you have any kind of beta user experience um, with those that can that can comment to that particular um, feature. And I don't know if it's a browser issue too. I'm using Chrome, but presumably it's good on all the browsers. Thank you, Commissioner Krugliak. Uh, we are using a, a software put together by um, Esri, which is the leading GIS software company um, in the world. Uh, I believe they have done testing on there and I don't know for sure, but I would expect so. We have not done any focus group testing on this tool. Um, we're using, it's a somewhat out of the box um, tool that we have available through Esri, um, but we can look into the ability to increase the size of those. I think you saw within the demo, it can yeah be a little bit tricky to grab onto those small dots to make edits. So uh, we will bring that back and look for the functionality to maybe make that easier. And I apparently am one of those people that's just going to have trouble. So if you'd like me to be your um, demo user for that use case, I'm unsure that um, I'm probably a good one for it. We appreciate that offer. And I'll just add to that. Thank you for taking on the guinea pig function, Christina, because I, I'd like a little bit more to hear more from you all um, about accessibility, particularly for those who might have even more difficulties maneuvering or even seeing. Um, it, it does get small at times. I think Rachel showed some ways to manipulate it that can be helpful, um, but anything that increases accessibility of, it would of course be welcome. Uh, Commissioner Pons next, and then I don't see anyone else requesting. So that might be it. Commissioner Pons, please. Yes, Jed and Rachel, thank you for the outstanding brief. I am not a subject matter expert on GIS or mapping, but I want to be fully informed. So when we conduct these briefings and these testimonies to the communities of interest in the public that I can, I don't have to default to you, I can defer to you. 
And so I'm going to ask that as we go through this series of training that you make me relatively smart on the process and the tool, because I think in my mind, the trust and the confidence of this process is really going to hang on the trust and the confidence of the public in this tool and our ability to not only use it, but to understand it. I say that to say this, um, when you talk to me um, as a civilian that's gonna use this tool, I look at it through four lens, the objectives, goals and objectives, the assumptions that go into it, the constraints, the things that we have to do, uh, some of the uh, restraints, the things that we cannot do, and last and most importantly, some of the risk associated with the tool itself. And so I'm just gonna ask you to sort of accommodate me as you do the training, as we do the training, to explain it through those lens uh, so that when we talk to the public, we can talk to them that this tool has limitations, uh, but we sort of uh, mitigated the risk associated with those limitations through assumptions, constraints, and restraints. Does that make sense to you, Jed and or Rachel? It, it does. I am following you, Commissioner Pons. Um, in what form would it be helpful for us to provide that? Is that um, a one pager that the commission could use that better um, explains it in those terms? This is an so example. When we, start to do, when we start to put together the briefings, normally we have slides and talking points and a script. So when it's my turn to go to the dais, I'm gonna look to have that script in front of me and uh, so can I can speak sort of smartly or seemingly smart about the process and the tool itself, okay? Understood, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that. Any other comments or questions? Very good, well, again, Jed, Rachel, your team, thanks for all the hard work on this. Of course, I haven't even mentioned Commissioner Inman who has done great work to get us to this point as well. And I'm sure we'll be helping to follow up on all these things as we look forward to using that community builder tool in all its different ways uh, and see the continued ideas and comments from our public partners. Jed, I'll ask you to hold on because you'll, I think, be interested in the next discussion item. Uh, but with that, we'll move ahead to item eight, item nine, sorry, a demogra demographic services update and discussion and possible designation, forgive me, I have to read this at length, of Commissioner Inman pursuant to section 1.4 of county contract number 564865 to approve subcontracts for Upflow Analytics, including the selection of the racially polarized voting analysis subcontractor subject to the concurrence of the IRC of compliance with section 1.4 of the contract. To explain and introduce the item, let me remind commissioners that the IRC's racially polarized voting analysis or RPV is a component of the flow analytics contract and a statement of work for this effort was included in your agenda items materials for tonight. This item provides an update to the IRC about the path forward on RPV. We'll also consider naming a commissioner to serve as designee to approve subcontractors of flow analytics, including for RPV analysis as specifically stated in the flow contract. I understand Jed will be giving us an update on timelines and next steps on the mapping process, and then a specific presentation on RPV. We'll then hear from council on other aspects of the issue. So Jed, you have the floor once again, thank you. Thanks again, Chair Bame. And this is gonna be verbal presentation. Um, and I'm gonna just start with background real quick on um, RPV stating that section two of the Federal Voting Rights Act of 1965 provides uh, protection against vote dilution on the basis of race and ethnicity. A 1986 Supreme Court case established a three-part test for pr proving whether or not vote dilution has occurred. Uh, the first part is the minority group be sufficiently large and geographically compact so as to constitute a majority in a single district. Second part, the minority group must be politically cohesive. The third part, the white majority votes uh, as a block so that it can defeat the minority's preferred candidate. And racially polarized voting analysis really focuses in on those last two parts, voting block behavior of the minority and the white majority. If there's evidence of minority vote dilution in the county, 
Legal counsel and flow will support the commission in determining what it means for the mapping process going forward. So in consultation with legal counsel, Commissioner Inman and county staff, um, Flo has determined it will seek the services of an experienced academic researcher to perform this analysis. We expect that the analysis will undergo serious legal scrutiny. And this approach is gonna put the commission in the, best, uh, in the best possible position to put forward a recommendation that is rigorous and exceeding the legal requirements of the Federal Voting Rights Act. And so the statement of work to be performed has been included with the meeting materials. And I just wanna let folks know timing wise that Flo is in talks with several researchers to perform the statement of work and aims to report back to the commission at the August 12th meeting um, with its selection. And that concludes my, my verbal update on that piece. Jed, do you wanna mention something about timeline? That, that was the, the final piece there. Um, now, at the end of the statement of work, you'll see a very short statement um, about the desired um, per period of performance, which would be um, from August until the end of September um, is when we would hope to conclude this work. Thank you very much. Council. Thank you, Chair Bame. And I think we have a, just a brief PowerPoint here to uh, let's go back to the first slide. Thank you. Um, this is uh, being brought to your attention because of an agreement, a, a provision in the uh, flow agreement. It was also in the scope of work. It was part of their, um, uh, of part of the items that uh, occurred in their um, response, and that was uh, the uh, performance of racially polarized voting work. It was anticipated that this could have been done through subcontracts. However, the flow agreement provides that these subcontracts, if at a particular level, need to be approved by uh, two sources, one, the county core, but two, uh, the uh, the IRC or its designee. And so I've highlighted the word designee in uh, red uh, because we're asking you today, this uh, item asks you to select that designee. So on the next slide, uh, the question naturally comes up, well, isn't this the SPOC? So moving to the next slide. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at something else, there we go. And if you look at the description of the SPOC from the June 10 motion, it doesn't reference serving as a designee under the consultant contract. So the motion you're asked to uh, consider now is filling in that gap. So the, there is not a requirement certainly that the SPOC uh, be the designee, but uh, it, it seems a, a logical extension of uh, the SPOC role. So the motion, which is on the next page, and actually, uh, Chair Bain, we need to uh, look a little closer at this motion and the one you have brought forward. I don't know if we have that on the table yet, but it would be that a commissioner and uh, one likely name to go in there is Commissioner uh, uh, Inman, be appointed IRC designee for subcontract approval under that particular section of the flow analytics agreement. And then this would be subject to concurrence of the IRC as to compliance with section 1.4. So that would be the uh, that would be the motion. And that is the rationale for bringing it to you. It fills in a gap in the SPOC description and a need under the flow contract. Uh, that's Andy. my presentation, Chair Bain. Good. 
thank you for that. Uh, and we'll bring that motion back um, when we get to it, but it is an important function as well for the entire commission. So before we move on to clarifying questions and then a motion, David, are there any members of the public who wish to speak on this agenda item? Thank you, Chair Beam. No request in advance of today's meeting. If anyone present would like to address the commission on this item, please raise a virtual hand at this time by clicking the raise hand button on Zoom or by pressing star nine if you're dialing in by phone. Not seeing any requests to speak, that concludes public comment on this item, Chair Beam. Very good. Commissioners, are there any clarifying questions before we move on to a discussion? Very good. Uh, as this is an action item, let me, I'm sorry, Commissioner Diaz. You're muted, I'm afraid. I'm not quite clear about, um, so how many motions, sorry about that. <laughs> door, somebody's at the doorbell. Um, how many motions are we voting on tonight? I mean, I'm not understanding what we're doing first and then. Right, let me, let, me, let me ask to bring the slide up. I think that might help clarify things. So basically it's the motion would be beginning at the word moved, that second paragraph. And what we need is to add a name as part of that motion, uh, which at least initially I think will uh, consider the current SPOC. Commissioner Diaz, does that answer the question? Yeah, but I'm, I'll hold from another time. Okay. It's just my okay. understanding of the, the subcontract issue with um, the RPV and I'm rereading the scope of work again, but I'm, yeah. No, we can certainly, we will certainly discuss it. Yeah, so um, good, we'll, we'll move on to the discussion. Okay, before that though, we'll need, let's leave this slide up. Uh, do I have a commissioner willing to make this motion? And I'll go ahead and make clear that initially uh, the motion will be for Commissioner Inman to be appointed the IRC designee. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay, Vice Second. Commissioner. Second, Commissioner Larson, very good. Now we'll move on to discussion. Um, let me ask to take that off again. Good, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Diaz, do you want to go first or do you want to review the, the statement of work a little bit more? Um, if anyone has any other comments about this, I would be happy to listen. And we'll wait, please, please take, go ahead and review. Um, Commissioner Inman, do you have any thoughts on this? Are you willing to serve if so designated? Yes, I'm, I'm willing to serve. And this is uh, to, again, fill in a gap, as uh, Marguerite said, and give us the flexibility to move quickly on uh, having somebody fill this role without waiting for another IRC meeting to formally bring back uh, an approval process for a subcontractor. So it's, uh, essentially, what you're saying is I'm the designee of the IRC, and I can say I concur with whoever Flo would select. I can't be involved in the selection process, but I can concur. At the next meeting, we would come back and we would say this is the person that was selected. Um, Commissioner Inman concurred. The IRC would then have a chance to review that, just like we did when we hired contractors, essentially. Um, the IRC could turn around and say, no, we don't like that. And we would go back and change it, but it's essentially giving me the authority to concur with um, the initial hiring. And then we would come back for, uh, uh, for to the full IRC to make that announcement and have a discussion. And I wanna to get to Commissioner Diaz as soon as possible, but at that moment, I do wanna ask council if they wanna offer any comments on, uh, particularly on the word concurrent or the words concurrence of the IRC. Yeah, what I, I do want to point out that this really is um, Flo's selection. Uh, there are particular criteria for subcontractors that are in the contract, and the concurrence would be uh, that the selected uh, contractor meets the uh, provisions of the contract, and we would be 
uh, that we would bring that back to you. We don't obviously don't have that now, uh, but we would bring that back uh, 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 for uh, when when the uh, the selection is presented to you. Okay, Commissioner Diaz, thank you for your patience. Please go ahead. Yeah, so I guess we wouldn't know who that contractor named would be until Ken comes to the meeting to say that that's the contractor. So we have no clue who that would be right now as at this moment. And I think if I understand the process correctly, that's the way the process is designed to function under the contract. Um, do I have it right that we would know that identity in the agenda materials that are provided 72 hours before the meeting? Yes, that it, it should be in the agenda materials, uh, Chair Bain. Right. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Diaz, did you have further comment? Okay. Any other comments? Very good. We will begin to move to a vote then, unless I see any last minute requests for comment. Excellent. So David, could you please call the roll for a vote? Thank you, Chair Bayman. Just for the accuracy of your minutes, I caught Vice Chair Garcia as the maker of the mo motion and Commissioner Larson as the seconder. Unless there's any objection to that, Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Serban? Commissioner Garcia? Aye. Commissioner Diaz? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Russ? Aye. Commissioner Dostal? Aye. Commissioner Pons? Aye. Commissioner Inman? Aye. Commission, uh, Chair Baim? Aye. Commissioner Larson? Aye. Commissioner Krugliak? Aye. Commissioner Katarina? Aye. Chair Baim, that motion passes unanimously with all commissioners who are present voting aye. Very good. So uh, thank you commissioners for that. Thank you again, Jed and your entire team. Uh, and not least, thanks again, Commissioner Inman for wearing yet another hat, uh, but one that I think we leave things in good hands with. And commissioners again, look forward to your consideration of concurrence as the subcontractor she moves forward. If I may, Chair Bain, if, if uh, just one other uh, timeline update, if I could. Please. And I think it's uh, very relevant uh, given discussions that I've seen and, and also Commissioner Pons uh, talking about uh, getting education around the community builder tool. So part of the timeline for flow is to develop training materials on census geography data, um, uh, all aspects of uh, what we need to know relative to the uh, PL 94-171 data. And the, the goal is over the next several meetings in August to start to conduct those training classes because as uh, Commissioner Ponce points out, it's very important as we go out and start talking about this that we, that we have sufficient information so that we can, uh, uh, we can uh, the public can be confident that we know what we're doing in, in our role and job. And so that is in the works and we will have a series of trainings on census data, uh, the appeal information, what's there, how it's used, um, you know, just a whole host of topics that are gonna be very relevant um, around our ability uh, to, uh, to make decisions as well as talk to the public in an educated way about this data. So I just wanted to get that in. Thank you very much, Chair Bing. No, appreciate that. Appreciate um, comments from Commissioner Pons and others. And not to steal Commissioner Russ's thunder once again, but I will. Um, don't be surprised, Commissioners, if you are requested to do some homework between meetings so that we can start from some sort of basic foundation recommending, with the help of Flo and Commissioner Inman, which video or background paper would be best to read so we can start from a common foundation. And for the public, I promise, we'll make sure that's included in the agenda materials so that you can review it as well and join the discussion. So with that, thank you again. Jed, thanks to you and your team yet again. Look forward to seeing you on the 12th. Thank you, Chair Bam. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right.
Now a nice short item, agenda item 10, discussion and possible approval of revisions to IRC bylaws. Commissioners, you'll remember at our last meeting, we reviewed a draft or revised bylaws and specific changes so that comments and suggestions could be offered. I asked staff and council to compile a matrix of feedback, both from that July 8th meeting, as well as the additional feedback that was received by email to staff prior to the deadline set of 5 p.m. on July 15th. Let me note, just to clarify, that Barbara Jimenez received two sets of comments from commissioners after the July 15th deadline, both of which are included in the agenda materials, but are not incorporated into the matrix or redraft of the bylaws. I wanna compliment staff and council for the great work they did in putting together the matrix, especially given its detailed references to comments and suggestions, as well as for council's sage and privileged advice and commentary to us as clients. I emphasize that because that advice must of course remain confidential as a matter of attorney client privilege and private advice to us. So please be discreet um, in keeping those matters in mind. Now, more recently, Co-Vice Chair Garcia has worked diligently with council and staff to incorporate all those suggestions into a final draft that you have before you today. Since she's most familiar with this draft and all the comments that were going to be received, that were received, I want to turn to her first to introduce the draft and then to lead our discussion of this item. I'm going to, uh, I had initially planned for a time limit of 45 minutes after which we would revisit it. I may shorten that uh, because we really do have some other things we need to get onto as well, but it really depends on the commission's familiarity with the issue. That said, I'd still very much like to see this passed and approved tonight. Uh, with, of course, discussion as needed, particularly on the one or two issues of most concern to the commission. I'll, of course, be ready to step in, but I'm going to follow Co-Vice Chair Garcia's lead on that. So again, with thanks to everyone concerned for all the work to date, to commissioners for providing such useful inputs, let me give the floor to Co-Vice Chair Garcia to introduce the draft. Rosette. Thank you, Chair Bain. Um, I'll keep my introductory comments um, as brief as I can so that we can spend most of our allotted time on discussion. Uh, I, I recognize that we're running a little bit behind um, schedule. So um, in your agenda packet, as Chair Bain mentioned, you have the matrix where all the comments have been compiled. Um, all of the comments that were made in our last meeting and, and then the emails that were submitted after the last meeting. You got a marked up version of the revised bylaws. I hope that was helpful. Um, several of you indicated that you'd like, you wanted to be able to track changes. And um, then we provided a clean version in case the tracked um, changes uh, version was a little messy. Um, and as Chair Bain mentioned, we received uh, emails from Commissioner Pons and Katerina after the deadline. And so those comments have not been incorporated into the revised draft that you've um, received. I'm not gonna re recapitulate each revision or edit by section as we did last time, um, because I think for the most part, um, the explanations for the edits and revisions were provided in the marked up uh, document and the, and the comments and the margins. Uh, let me just quickly recap um, some of the changes that, I, that were made that I think might require a little bit of clarifying, um, a little bit of clarification, um, but not too much discussion. Um, and then I'm gonna just preview the two or three items that might require a little bit more discussion. So um, beginning with, so just the, the minor or what I'm gonna call minor or not too controversial um, revisions where changes throughout the document to remove references to specific sections of the law um, and instead use more general language. Commissioner Servan asked us to do that and council um, agreed that that was okay to do. Um, we had, again, Commissioner Servan asked um, for us to um, have a discussion or to put some language in there about compensation. We did add some language, I, I'm sure you might've noticed um, it mentions the possibility of compensation for commissioners, but we do not have the authority to grant ourselves compensation. Um, 
the um, we we narrowed, if you will, we kind of clarified um, a section on qualifications of commissioners. We limited it to um, re requiring residency in the county of San Diego, and that was something that council flagged um, because um, in the section that's related to um, qualifications. It all has to do with um, 10 years, the sort of the 10 years prior to being appointed a commissioner. And um, it has to do with voting behavior, political party, elective office, employment, lobbying, and that sort of thing. And really the only, you have to have qualified in order to be appointed. And really the only thing, the only qualification going forward once you're appointed has to do with residency. So we clarified that we didn't want to. Um, uh, we didn't want language in there that was confusing or made commissioners feel like um, those initial qualifications carry forward and um, during the term of service. Um, and then we added um, some additional language about general counsel that was added in section five hundred six. Um, and that was to respond to some question, to some concerns about um, the ability of IRC to hire general counsel, about county providing interim counsel until that could happen. So hopefully um, that um, responds to some of those concerns. Um, and I think those are the most significant of what I'm going to call the minor clarifying edits. Um, so some of the, the, the items that might that I think we might want to spend more of our time on, and of course, commissioners should um, ask all the questions and we should discuss what we need to discuss in order to move these bylaws forward. Um, but I'm going to point out that we added some language in Article 4, Powers and Duties. Um, this was language that um, was an attempt to respond to comments made by Commissioner Krupliak and others. Um, about IRC um, decision-making authority and IRC independence. Um, and I wanna stop here with um, a reminder, again, Commissioner Bain has already mentioned this, but I wanna make sure that um, everybody understands that as we go forward in the, the next session, sections of clarifying questions and discussion, that we avoid mention of any of the content from the privileged uh, memo we received from council. So anyway, there's that, uh, the additional language that we tried to incorporate that was suggested by Commissioner Krugliak, and then um, perhaps um, discussion about political activity. And um, I won't go into any detail there. We can just have that conversation if people have questions about that. And then um, there was some clarifying language in the communication section that commissioners might have. Um, some questions or um, that we might need to have a more involved uh, discussion about. So with that, um, I will turn it back to you, Chair Bain, um, to get us through the, the rest of this discussion. Just temporarily, and then I'll hand it back to you. Um, one thought to bear in mind, thank you very much, Rosette, for that great introduction and survey of all of how we got to this place and what the way ahead might be. I do want to note that we will continue looking at both this document and the inputs received, not just for the sake of the bylaws that we're going to operate under, but what the next commission will be dealing with and what might be more appropriately handled in recommendations for what the next commission is authorized to do, what resources it has, and how it operates. It's a very fine line, but um, again, my hat's off to Rosette, staff, and council for getting to, a, I think, a very reasonable place on that line, at least for initial discussion. All right, before we move on, let me ask David, are there any requests from the public to address this agenda item? Thank you, Chair Bim. None in advance of today's meeting. If any member of the public present would like to address the commission on this item, please raise a virtual hand at this time. Not seeing any requests to speak. That concludes public comment on this item, Chair Babe. Very good. So before I hand it back to Co-Vice Chair Garcia, um, 
Well, uh, Rosette, if you don't mind, why don't I take us through and get the motion laid out? Okay, so next, let's have clarifying. Are, are, we, doing, are we doing clarifying questions first? We're doing clarifying questions first. Let me emphasize though, these should be just clarifying questions, not discussion yet. So just anything you're unsure about with regard to the process or any questions you have about specific changes that were made. I have Commissioner Russ and then Co-Vice Chair Katarina. Commissioner Russ, please. Yeah, I, I wanna say what a, what a tremendous job this was and, and what a big job this was. And I don't know if there's a clarifying question or a process, but I, I wanna say that uh, section 3.05, the political activity, that's where I had some questions about um, uh, uh, two, uh, three weeks ago. I, I think that that has been um, clarified. I think it's been well, well um, um, enumerated here. Uh, I, I just on the one thing about the option one or option two for the um, for the uh, the number of years and and I, I think that may come up uh, uh, during uh, the next portion of the uh, of the discussion. But I want to say that um, I think that the whole document is really a good piece of work, and my concerns, uh, particularly in that section, were were addressed very well addressed. Thank you. Good to hear. Thank you, Co Vice Chair Katerina. Oh, I agree with uh, with Commissioner Russ. Amazing job. I'm so impressed. Um, I had one little itty bitty thing um, because it came up today. And this is really something I think for council, I just want to clarify. Um, we, we took out the term workshop when we were talking about what kind of meetings we can hold. We have regular meetings, special meetings, et cetera, public hearings. Now that we have potentially uh, introduce the concept of having a workshop through um, some of our outreach um, plans, legal counsel, do we need to add the word workshop in when we're talking about what types of meetings we will hold? I hope not. I don't wanna make any changes to this document. We don't have to. I'm hoping it could be covered under kind of the other catch-all uh, uh, phrase that is it, that's used in in certain places. So uh, I would just like some clarification on that. Um, I, I think Marguerite, do you want to go? No, go right ahead. I I just was uh, going to ask Commissioner uh, Vice Chair Katarina, are do you are you looking at a specific provision here, just so that we answer it in context? Sure. Um, there are a couple places where we talk about um, meetings. Uh, one is in section uh, where we talk about the obligations of the commissioners attendance section 3.8. We say commissioners are expected to attend all regular meetings, special meetings and public hearings. You know, do we need to add, uh, you know, workshops or, or, or not there? That was one place. Um, and the second place was back in the job description of the, the chair and under section 5.02, we say to convene and preside over regular and special committed commission meetings and public hearings. And then this is where I thought the catch all could be and perform duties otherwise established by these bylaws and operating procedures. I wasn't sure if the, the workshop could fit into that catch all or not, but those were the two places where I saw, um, you know, you, you know, some descriptions of regular meetings and special meetings. If I could, it, um, we did use language that says uh, commission meetings, public hearings or other commission events, um, we didn't add that language in that uh, section that you referred to um, under duties of the chairperson. So um, we could certainly at, make sure that it's consistent throughout, but I'm wondering, Marguerite, if um, the language or other commission events um, covers the workshops. Um, uh, yes, uh, first of all, um, workshops may end up being a commission event where a full commission doesn't need to be present and that it's conducted by the consultant and maybe four or five of you are there. So it's a little more of an informal thing. 
So I think as Commissioner Katarina is pointing out, it doesn't necessarily have to be a mandatory attendance. Okay. Okay, so that so that would be the the first one. And I think these commissions are kind these workshops are kind of an organic thing that come up as needed. We heard from the public today the and from our uh, e-comments, the need to have interaction in various other areas than those planned. And I think we need to have the flexibility to do that with less than a, a full commission, uh, uh, Commissioner Gar uh, Vice Chair Garcia. So my view would be that it doesn't need to be added. Okay. All right. Excellent. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Good, good. Any other clarifying questions? For Commissioner Diaz, sorry. Um, in section 5.06, where it says commission staff, I noticed that the, I did too notice the redundancy of taking out um, that first line, but then I really think that it also would, somehow the independence of the commission is lost somewhere. I know it's there. It's just, I feel like it's it's an issue that I think it, this, this is where it says, staff is key to the successful independent operation of the commission in accordance with the law, is key to the successful independent operation. Um, I, I don't know if we, if, I mean, that's, I don't know if that even has a place in, in the bylaws itself, but that's just, I, I just wanted to ask staff or in this case, um, the thought, what the thought was behind that. And if, if we can, I see down below, it's clarifying language a bit below, um, but, yeah, that was just my, that was a big section for me to digest. Thank you. Um, yes, Commissioner Diaz, and if you read further, it even says, and, and this was in the, in the revision, uh, in the draft that you saw at our last meeting, this language is in there already. It also says commission staff performs its duties in a manner to safeguard the independence of the commission pursuant to the applicable sections of the elections code. Um, that language was added uh, when Amy and I were working on the on the bylaws for the very the first round of revisions, um, and it was really in response to to um, comments that had been made by the commission um, and concern that um, language like that would be placed in the bylaws, and that I mean, and that this is not the only place where you'll find language about independence. Um, but it, it, we were, I think, um, trying to respond to um, that concern that that the that there was, um, you know, bylaws um, serve to um, provide um, structure, stability, and continuity for an organization, and um, they also kind of they reinforce the mission and they reflect the values of an organization, and so. That's that was the the thought behind um, emphasizing language like that in more than one place in the bylaws. I don't know if anyone else has um, would like to comment on that if they feel like that doesn't need to be there. But um, cert certainly the um, you know pointing out that staff's duty is and, and I'm and I'm, they're well aware of this, I, I'm sure. But the, what, what they do is support the uh, mission of the IRC, support the IRC and make sure that, that our independence is maintained. Thanks for the clarification. Let me ask that we defer further discussion on that till we get to a motion. Okay. Any other clarifying questions? Good, so at uh, this time, let me ask for a motion along the lines of to approve the revision to the IRC's bylaws as included in the agenda materials 
and something like, and as agreed in the preceding discussion. So any changes that are made in the discussion we're about to have will be captured and included. So do we have a motion? I move. To do so. I I'm move. sorry, who was that? Move. Commissioner Russ, thank you. Second? Commissioner Hansen, thank you. Okay, with that, let me return to co-vice chair Garcia. Rosette, I'm happy to help in any way you like, but please go ahead. Um, I'm wondering if we should maybe go right to political activity, because I think maybe that's a place where we might want to have some conversation. And I just want to preface that by saying that um, the prohibition on engaging um, in Board of Supervisors races has been relaxed and now asks commissioners to voluntarily refrain from publicly endorsing or otherwise publicly supporting or opposing candidates or incumbents in these races. So we, um, and, and, and that was after council did some research on, um, on the law for um, uh, government employees or um, people such as us, appointed off people in appointed office. Um, for, clar for clarification purposes, we've included, again, as a voluntary act, um, we added ballot measures. So it's not just um, the supervisors races, but any ballot measures related to the Board of Supervisors. Um, and then as uh, Commissioner Russ pointed out, um, we need to determine as a commission what the time period for this voluntary restriction should be. One year, beginning basically at the beginning of the year that we start our work. So it says in the language, it says December 31st of a year ending in zero. So that's the census year. Um, so basically from, it would, it would, that voluntary restriction would end on December 31st of 2021 or it could be for two years, in which case it would end for us, um, December 31st of 2022. Um, one has us uh, refraining from any political activity in those races during the time that we're actually sort of actively working on redistricting. The other one would have us um, not be able to be involved for the first election cycle. So, um, why don't we start with section 305 political activity? And I, does anybody have any questions or concerns or comments? Yeah, Rosette, as I understand it, uh, it's voluntary, but we, we are not to, um, uh, you know, call to the attention that we were commissioners on the redistricting commission. Right, so I that's- think, yeah. So section paragraph B was added and um, council added that language. Let me see, and, and it has to do with the fact that in no case, in no instance, in any race, in any sort of political activity, can the commission or an individual commissioner engage in political activity in their official capacity as a commissioner or, uh, you know, and neither can the commission. So, um, that was um, an additional paragraph that was added in that section 305. Yeah. yeah, the only issue I see in that 305 is that whether it's option one or option two, that's the only Correct. thing that's and then, right now, yeah. Right, and then just to, um, so that whole section 305 was reworked based on all of the input yeah. that we got from the commissioners and their, you know, the questions we, we heard. Um, so, we, um, in paragraph C, um, there is no prohibition on any political activity um, for any other elective offices or ballot measures within or outside of the County of San Diego. Again, as an individual citizen, not as, yeah. never as a commissioner can you um, engage in political activity. So that's section 305 and, um, you know, I certainly love to hear if the language um, generally sounds okay to everybody, and then we need to determine um, if the pro if this voluntary restriction on board of supervisor related um, elections 
um, should stand for a year or two years. So, Rosette, you've got hands. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I, I can't see everybody. Wanted, if you want me to do it or not, but um, the hands I see right now are Commissioner Dostal and then Co-Vice Chair Katerina. Sorry. Um, so yes, Amy. So, um, well, I uh, love the revised section 3.05 um, and I would just going to go put a stake in the ground for option one, my, my personal opinion. That's one year. Okay. Commissioner Dostal? Are you, I think you might be muted. Sorry. Um, yeah, I agree with the one year. Um, and my other question was, C and D seem to be contradictory because it says there shall be no prohibition. And it's like, we're ineligible though. So that's- a, yeah. So a paragraph D has to do with running for office. And that comes straight out of the um, election code section. We're, we're, we're prohibited. For right, running. that's why I say that. I mean, to me, running for office is a political activity. So for me to say- Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say maybe something like, um, uh, you know, just putting a clause in there, you know, just acknowledging except as provided in um, all of these sections, not just above. Okay, got what it. I'm saying. Um, yeah, we can, we can. Uh, yeah, Commissioner Dostal, if you moved C, below D, would that do it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And since we're moving, oh, sorry. No, I was just say staff, you, did you capture that? <laughs> and since we're moving stuff in this already, if we're gonna do that, I would also suggest that we put B first. That I says, agree. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when so I tried for... to do that, it made a mess of the document. And so um, I totally agree. It belongs okay. first. Thank you. That's Chair all Bain. I have on that section. Thank you. I'll defer to Commissioner Kugliak first. Commissioner Kugliak. Um, I just really quickly wanted to um, throw my hat in that I support option two. Um, that's the election that's most likely going to be impacted by our work. So I think staying uh, away from that election, um, given our job, makes sense. But of course, defer to the to the um, commission on that. Thank you, uh, Chair Bame. Do you want to continue deferring? I see Bar uh, Commissioner Hansen and. Sure. Thank you, Commissioner Hansen. think you're muted. I agree with Christina. We don't want to be involved in the, the election that occurs right after our decision has been made because there could be the assumption that our decisions were clouded by political ambitions. Thank you. Commissioner Bain? Chica, Chair Bain. It's, act, it's exciting to actually raise a hand. I've never done that before, it's great. Um, yeah, just to follow up on those comments, if I'm reading correctly, if, op if we took option one and it had immediate effect, that would mean if we got the deadline extended, commissioners could engage in political activity before we had uh, actually approved, submitted our approved map. Right. So I, I think if I'm reading that right, we, we really have to go for option two. I, I'm gonna ask council if they'd like to weigh in at this time. I, I mean, yes, you, you are understanding that correctly, um, Chair Bame, and in a, in, a, um, in a normal, I'm gonna use the word normal, in a normal world um, where the Census uh, Bureau gets the data on time and reported on time and there is no pandemic, the, the lines would be drawn and the map submitted in August. Um, and 
you know, the review year, the review, pro the 30 days would be done by September. Um, I, I, if it's okay for me to weigh in now, I think that we should not, I think we should not participate in, in the first election cycle after we draw the maps. Um, so I would prefer the two year um, voluntary restriction. Um, and maybe we'll need to take a straw poll to figure out where the commission is on that. But um, Marguerite, did you wanna to respond to Chair Bain's comment? Uh, yes, Chair Bain, um, uh, you're absolutely right and you're correct too, uh, 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 Vice Chair Garcia. Uh, if we get an extension to the middle of January, the one year would end before that. But that could also be addressed uh, in a motion where you say, oh, we're gonna extend it uh, a month. It could be addressed in the motion. The bylaws is supposed to be something that is stable. So we really did not uh, consider drafting these provisions based on contingencies. Um, and I think Commissioner Garcia, Chair, uh, Vice Chair Garcia, your explanation of the one year during drafting versus the two year, the first election cycle is accurate. Any other questions or comments? And I, just one other point that I wanna make, um, and it, it's in this, the comments. So this is a page, it's my page two of the bylaws, yeah. And um, I, we have comments here where council cites the government code that provides no restrictions shall be placed on the political activities of any office, so on and so forth. Um, and so that's, the bylaws are intended to um, uh, acknowledge, um, acknowledge that. Um, so, it, you know, we didn't wanna place restrictions on, on commissioners that were um, more constraining than, than the law would, would have. But um, I, I went back and looked at my notes from the um, ethics training course that we have. And um, I have here that um, the law sets a minimum standard and um, for ethical conduct, but a legal act can still be unethical. And um, so sometimes we, you know, there, this may be a case where we might want to actually set a higher bar and it's voluntary, but where we might want to set a higher bar for ourselves. Um, in order to do that thing that is repeated throughout the bylaws, which is to reinforce um, public confidence in the integrity of the, of the redistricting process. Um, so I don't know, Chair Bain, should we, what should we do at this point? Should we sort of take a straw poll to see where we are with the one year? That, that's something that we need to decide. Um. Are there any specific comments on that other than offered? If not, I would turn to Co-Vice Chair Katarina because she mentioned uh, the one year. I wanted to see if she has additional thoughts on that. I do. Um, so, so my first thought is, you know, if we're changing the boundaries, um, no candidate can can declare themselves until they actually until the boundaries are changed because we don't know where the residence is going to be. Um, and so that certainly is a consideration for one or two. However, um, you know, I'm being totally selfish. I love participating in the political environment and I like supporting my candidate, whether it's city council or supervisor or school board. Um, so, I'm okay with following um, Commissioner and Vice Chair Garcia's suggestion that we take the high road. Um, and, and, and a lot of what we do talk about is this issue of perception um, that, that yes, yes, we could, we could easily say it's going to be a one year moratorium, but if we really want to protect the perception of what we're doing, then we should consider a two year moratorium. So I would be, um, I would be, you know, in agreement with the commission if that were the approach that, that we wanted to take. 
So maybe a straw poll won't be necessary. Is there any further advocacy? Oh, sorry, Commissioner Dostal. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say I, um, mine was kind of just more the freedom of the people who are on the commission to endorse their candidate if they want to. And it's like, we don't have a candidate right now because again, we don't have boundaries. So I, you know, I understand the perception issue. Um, I'm not a you know, super politically active person, but I know that the people who are, they really like to have their sign up when they have somebody that they want to support. So that, that was my thinking. Um, so I don't feel like super strongly about it. I get the point about appearances, um, but I do also think that, um, you know, when you volunteer, you know, then for you to now not be able to put your sign up if you want to, you know, um, that was my issue. It's just kind of the freedom of the person to endorse somebody if they want to. But I don't feel I super strongly it. about it. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I was just saying, but I don't feel super strongly about it. Like I'm gonna be like, no, let's do one year, so. I, I have to admit, oh, sorry. Can, sorry to keep hogging the floor, Rosette. Commissioner Brown. <laughs> Just going to suggest changing the wording to something like uh, that the period goes through the date that the final draft uh, map is drawn, or when it when it finalizes itself. So if it changes from December fifteenth to January fifteenth, then that's when our um, responsibility for being non political changes, rather than picking an actual date. Yeah. So I can I, float I, with. Yeah, I suppose the issue I have is that, and, and I am speaking as chair for the last several major discussions on these kind of things. This commission has spent so much time explaining and emphasizing its independence that I think the perception issue that was just being discussed really does become important as a guideline. Uh, and while I, I share Commissioner Dostal's interest in allowing as much free speech and political activity as possible. That's why people like us join a commission like this. I do think there needs to be confidence in the process. Um, personally speaking, at a time when I see so many things that really shouldn't be debated regarding political independence and avoiding political manipulation are being subject to that kind of questioning. I see tremendous value based on past commission discussion in having a maximum time period. Commissioner Stahl, I've already said too much, please. Oh, I just wanted to say, should we have a motion now to just vote on vote on the two year? We can we can go that way and maybe that'd be simpler. Um, Rosette, do you mind if I just run that quickly through? So let's have, um, Commissioner Brown, do you mind if we just pursue option two first and see what the flavor of that is? Okay, sorry, you're, you're muted. By all means, that's kind of my first choice. Anyhow, I just thought it might be easier if we use that. No, appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> Hillary, did you want to contribute something? Sorry. Yeah, just a quick, um, I, I think trying to get consensus from the commissioners as opposed to doing a formal motion since we don't have a separate action item to, to approve a discrete portion of the bylaws, just, just a technical Very good, there. okay. So is there objection to moving forward with option two when we get to a vote. In other words, is everyone willing to consider option two as part of the draft? Very good, so that's the straw poll. Thank you, Hillary, for that. Mm -hmm. um, Rosette, back to you. I would note that if I adhere to my original timeline, which didn't anticipate running this late, um, we have about 25 to 30 minutes left for discussion of the bylaws in general, but hopefully may not need that long. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, I think what I maybe at this point, uh, let me just the other couple of items. Um, I, I think I see only two that I thought maybe commissioners might have questions about or might want to discuss. Commissioner I just has her hand up. Um, may, it might be relevant to what we've just been discussing. Yes, this. please. Oh, Commissioner just all. Yeah, I think it was probably where you were going, um, Vice Chair Garcia, um, because you mentioned it before. Um, but I wanted to talk about the communications outside okay. of public hearings. So if we can just go ahead and, and, sure. and do that. Um, so I'm looking at 3.10D, as in David. Um, as I see it, there's two issues with our communications. 
there's Brown Act concerns and there's discussions with the public and remaining you know, independent and keeping the process um, open to everyone. And I feel like this section as it's written um, encompasses too much because it says any communication from anyone. And so I was wondering if we shouldn't change that to um, com communications with the public outside of a public meeting. Um, so that's just one suggestion. Um, the other thing was, uh, as far as the specific language, um, shall refrain from discussing with or receiving communications. Like I can't afford, I can't avoid receiving a communication if someone emails me. So what I was thinking is maybe changing that to inviting communications. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna d defer to uh, Marguerite and and ask for her advice on on that language. What we were trying to do um, there, um, Commissioner Dostal, is um, so the original bylaws were very broad, and there was just like one uh, one sentence paragraph that basically said. Commissioners may not, you know, have any conversations with anybody on redistricting matters, and um, and there was a lot of question about. Well, wait a minute. Every every time I say, you know, somebody asks me about what I, you know, I'm a redistricting commissioner. Every conversation I have about anything in which redistricting is discussed, I have to report that. So what we were trying to do here was to narrow. Um, those kinds of communications to specifically redrawing of district boundaries. So the communications that we're asking commissioners to, and we use the language refrain from, although maybe what you just suggested is better, um, but what we were trying to um, do here was to clarify that commissioners are really not allowed to talk about boundaries, maps, you know, drawing lines anywhere outside of a public meeting. And if that should happen, so we wanted to start with saying, you know, you should refrain from that. Um, and you're right, you, um, you can't control if somebody walks up to you and has that conversation with you or sends you an email or whatever. So um, we were trying to sort of acknowledge uh, acknowledge that. So by starting out by saying, okay, hey, you can't have a conversation about this outside of a public meeting, but if that should happen, it must be reported. So that's the way that's worded. Um, Marguerite, would you like to respond? Yeah, then I, the, yeah, yeah. That, that, was nice, that was a nice ex exclamation, uh, explanation, Vice Chair Garcia. But I also want to point to the last sentence in this provision. So you see, it's, it's not meant to be, well, it is meant to be a, a, a muscle, but the reason it's meant to be a muscle is that we make, so we make sure that we have communications to you as commissioners captured for the public record. So we don't want anybody to say, well, oh my gosh, I discussed this with Commissioner Chen and we sat down and talked about it and I might as well have talked to the wall. That will not have happened. Commissioner Chen, people are gonna come up and talk to him, but then he will bring it into the public uh, arena through the ex parte log. So that, that's, the, that's the intent of it. Uh, the, um, the state commission actually has a complete prohibition. This is a prohibition uh, with an ability to cure by fully disclosing on the ex parte log. So we tried to soften it a bit. We tried to narrow. It's a conversation that could impact line drawing. You know, not just, you know, uh, oh, what, you know, what about this commission process? Impact line drawing. Yeah, please don't bring it up out there, but if it gets brought up to you, bring it back to the commission and get it logged so the public knows. Uh, you're entitled to consider all of this in your decision-making about lines, but we need to have it on the record. So that's the point. What about her um, 
uh, uh, Commissioner Destal's suggestion that instead of saying shall refrain from, but we change it to um, shall not invite. Is that what you said? Oh uh, yeah. Well, I was just saying about uh, I should you know I shall refrain from receiving communications, and I was just saying I can't. If somebody sends me an email, I've received it. So I was thinking of changing that receiving to inviting communications, something like that. Just you know, it's just a small thing, but. Yeah, you know, I can't help stop someone yeah, from sure it still, um, it's uh, if you let's say you don't invite, but you get a very long email from your neighbor about you didn't invite it, but you get this very long email. We would hope that the bylaws would urge you to bring that to the commission. And that's why it is phrased this way. Right. And I think we it says that that we we if you get if you receive something. Again, even though you've asked people not to send you anything, you still receive something that you you report it. Right. Um, for me, like I said, I just don't like to say I'm not going to do something I can't control. Yeah, See what I'm saying I, we can add the word. I understand your point. Yeah, so it's just that one word receiving. OK. And one more question for you, Marguerite. Um, so you don't think we should add something about from the public since we have your point was the last sentence says we can still right. talk to each other, so, okay. Correct. All right, I'm all right with that then, thank you. Any other questions on this um, section about communications? So sorry, we're just changing the word receiving to inviting, which is great. Yes. I just wanna make sure that's what we're doing. Okay. Um, and then let's see. The Commissioner only... Kruglak has a hand up. Yes, I was just going to actually say that um, the only other um, uh, points I wanted to, to raise what were the additional language that we added in um, Article 4, Powers and Duties. And we were um, trying to incorporate some of uh, Commissioner Kugliak's comments and comments from other commissioners. So I don't know if that's what you were going to comment on, Commissioner uh, Kugliak, but please. No, I was I was still on communication. Okay. Um, just an, an OCD comment that we also probably can't not discuss. If someone comes up to us and starts very nicely talking to us, I don't think any of us are necessarily always going to just like turn around and walk away, which is why the second line's there. So maybe instead of changing receiving to inviting, we can change it. Commissioners shall endeavor to, and then it just says that you're trying to not receive stuff. You know, it, it's out there that we don't want you guys. We don't want people to send us things that we shouldn't receive. It's out there that we don't want people to come up and talk to us about things we're not supposed to discuss, and and that's what we want. But. It could happen in both cases. It could happen with the discussion and it could happen with the receipt of communication. And I think it's true that in both cases, we can't necessarily keep that from happening. So um, I, don't, I don't know that changing just receive to invite addresses the first point could also happen without our intent. Um, so it, it might just be more comprehensive to say endeavor to, and then it, it's, a, it's a catch all for everything. Okay, so you're saying commissioners shall endeavor to refrain from discussing with or inviting communications from. So In I that case, that. you could keep it receiving, but I don't particularly care. Um, okay. it's, it's more just an allowing for the fact that both of those things could happen without our intent. Okay. I see it differently though, because I think I can refrain from discussing, because I've gotten stuff, you know, as soon as I became a commissioner, I got an email to my law firm address saying, hey, we want you to know this, 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 and this. And I said, thank you so much. I'm gonna forward it to staff so it could be shown to the public, you know, something like that. So to me, that wasn't a discussion and maybe we had substantive discussion or something like that. But to me, they are different. Like I can, I can control whether I discuss something. I can't control whether I receive something. So to me, they are distinct. And, and I think I don't like the precatory language because then it's like, we should endeavor, we should try and, you know, I like the, we shall not, you know, we shall not do this. I think it's important that we not have substantive discussions. So to me, they're, they're, they're separate. 
Okay, so you're talking about receiving, I was thinking receiving communication more as like an unintended email that you can't stop from coming, but you're seeing it even as people coming up to you and communicating to you so long as you don't communicate back. Right, that's, that's the distinction I see is that I can't control what other people do, I can only control what I do, and I'm not going to engage in a substantive discussion. That's the okay. difference. I, I just not, I had not read discussion as a back and forth. I'd read discussion as more of an in-person and the communication as a um, non-in-person. So I, I follow what you're saying. So, so we don't need to add the endeavor to, and Chair Bame, I see your hand is up. Did you wanna? Yeah, I just wanted to note that the next sentence in the event commissioners receive or engage. Um, so they shall refrain from discussing with or receive or inviting communications from, but if you do receive or engage in such communications, so there's already anticipation um, and I don't have, well, I could come up with different solutions, but I can, I can follow this logic pretty clearly. It's, this is what you shall do. And there's an implied to the best of your ability. Correct. And then if it happens, here's what you have to do. That to me is, is good guidance for the commission, but even more so it's transparent. It's something for people who think they're, they might want to serve on the commission or for people who are concerned about how the commission is doing its business. So I, I like the idea of just changing the one word to inviting and leaving the rest as is. Any other comments? I have one more. Sure. Um, on the uh, internet social media, which is section E of the same thing. Um, mm. uh, so when you talk about, um, and again, I think this goes to the substantive, you're talking about substantive, here's the line we're gonna draw, here's what I think about the actual line. But when you say that it doesn't include, um, uh, not intended to prohibit the publication of place and time. Does that include, um, so that includes like we can say, I was at this meeting, done, without, or should we not even be saying, I was at this meeting today, like tonight, say, just got out of my meeting at 10 p.m. <laughs> you know, if I post that on social media, is that a violation of this? I just wanted some clarification on, on that. So if, um, I would say that you would be able to say that, but if that still feels unclear to you, I'm wondering if you have a suggestion for language that would clarify that for you. Because, I mean, one of the goals of update of revising these bylaws was to, um, you know, obviate the need for these kinds of, you know, to, for commissioners to know what they're able to do and what they shouldn't be doing. Um, so it, it, you can, you just can't, you know, talk about the substance of meetings on internet and social, social media. Yeah, maybe um, if we just add in the last sentence regarding the time, place, attendance, something like that, just saying that, so that just because we say we're here, we're not violating it. Because I think I get the gist that you're trying to not do just substantive, but again, I was like, oh, but technically it seems like yeah. I'd be by just publishing that I or you know putting out there that I'm here. So maybe just put attendance, add attendance to the list of things we can. Marguerite, would that be? Oh, I lost myself here. <laughs> can we add attendance? Yeah, no, no, no. I no, I couldn't find my little square on the uh, <laughs> on the gallery there to turn on my video. You know, I think this is intended to um, uh, not prohibit the uh, the discussion about the upcoming meeting. We're having a very important meeting on the 18th. It's going to be our first public hearing. It's going to be all of that kind of stuff is permissible. Um, uh, what you're bringing up, Commissioner Dostal, doesn't seem to me to be a substantive communication that falls within either this or within the prohibition. 
you text to your friends commission meeting over. Um, I don't think that that's covered by this at all. Okay. And Thank it, you. Right? Okay. Yeah, that's that's clear. No, that's helpful. Thank you. Is that helpful? I, I mean, yeah. we can add the word upcoming, uh, Vice Chair Garcia. It didn't seem necessary to me, but it's certainly a possibility. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure like that that's, because um, like I said, upcoming isn't prior meetings. So I was like, oh wait, you know, but yeah, non-substantive, I think that's fine. I just right. want to make sure. Okay. Commissioner Diaz. Yeah, I just wanted to just clarify that the intent of the comment, I think, is important in this case, because if we comment on, oh, that meeting and our opinion, like our personal opinion, then that invites other people outside of a meeting, a public meeting, to comment and put their little emojis. I think that's what we want to avoid in this case. Um, not that I attended the meeting, period, that's it, end of discussion. But if you add something extra like how I felt about it, then that's, that's different. Exactly. Thank you. Um, I think we might have, um, uh, unless there are any other questions or areas of the bylaws that um, commissioners would like to discuss, or don't agree with, we, Chair Bain, we might, might be done. Thank you for that. And thanks for running that discussion so well. Thanks to all the commissioners for contributing. Yes, this is my usual extension by about 10 seconds for anyone who wants to think of any last comments they have. Very good. So, uh, Commissioner Diaz. Um, I know we write a report after this, after we, um, at the end of our uh, service, and I think there needs to be some kind of legislative action to clarify the independence of the IRC in its relation to the county. So that's my final comment. Um, I will save that for the report. <laughs> so noted, staff will have that in mind when we get to having that report. So thanks for that. All right. So with due thanks, um, the motion remains to approve the revision to the IRC bylaws as included in the agenda materials and as agreed in the preceding discussion. Example, changing the word receiving to inviting. Uh, with that in mind, unless there are any final questions, and the, two, and the two year voluntary restriction. Right, right. Okay. I was using that illustratively. We'll, we'll okay. have both of those, very good. Yes, and just to be clear, Chair Bame, if I may, the third one was the reordering of the political activity. I thought Correct. that was an excellent yeah. suggestion. Good. I think those are the three we have on the table. And that's really the only three, isn't it? Okay, good. Um, so that's, a very, all three very, that's what we're voting on. Good, very specific. Barbara, do you have those captured well? Yes, we are taking notes and then we'll also make sure before we finalize and we go back and listen to this conversation again. <laughs> Very good. And if there are any questions, um, Co-Vice Chair Garcia can take the lead in. Absolutely. <laughs> Very good. David, would you please call the roll for a vote on the motion? Thank you, Chair Bain. Commissioner Garcia. Aye. Commissioner Krugliak. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Katarina. Aye. Commissioner Dostal. Aye. Commissioner Russ. Aye. Commissioner Hansen. Aye. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Serban. Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Diaz. Aye. Commissioner Larson. Aye. Commissioner Pons. Aye. Chair Bain. Aye. Chair Bain, that motion passes unanimously with all commissioners who are present voting aye. Very good. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, council. Thank you, staff. 
uh, thanks to everyone for getting us to that point and in that amount of time. Much appreciated. If I, if I could, Chair Bam, I just, I just want to take one second to thank uh, Council for um, all their help in um, getting this uh, finalized and also to staff um, for all the work they did to help us get this done. Thank you. All right. Without extending it too far, um, I hope everyone understands um, what incredible work both Rosette and Amy did on this. Um, I know some of it's not necessarily completely transparent, but I think it's very visible between the lines. Yes, of course, staff and council. And again, that's it's an impressive matrix, it, especially in terms of transparency, especially in terms of the future report. Um, but to the co-vice chairs, thank you again so much for taking the lead on that. Now, item 11, the monthly budget update, which is an informational item with no action needed. Um, Nicole, I do not mean to undercut the importance of your report, but I do as always respect and appreciate your brevity and efficiency. With that, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair Bame. Tonight, I will briefly highlight the activity since the last monthly budget updates. You see the uh, updated budget coming up on screen here. Since last month, about $228,000 was spent with projected spending of more than $43,000 through the end of July, leaving the IRC with just over $946,000 remaining from the Board of Supervisors increased allocation of approximately $1.2 million. All expenditures over the past month were anticipated. For contracted services, the year-to-date actual amount includes only costs for external counsel of more than $209,000 through the May invoice. The projected amount includes the estimated invoice for June, which was not received at the time of agenda publication. Next expenditures for IT equipment includes monthly charges from the county's IT contractor for commissioner's laptops, network access, and email addresses. Actual and projected amounts include costs that have been incurred by the IRC and will be transferred to the redistricting budget as part of the county's fiscal year end closing process, which is currently in progress. Moving to the IT other category, this includes monthly charges for the Zoom service hosting the commission's virtual meetings through June. No Zoom invoices have been received since the last monthly budget update. For translation and interpretation, Actual and projected expenditures of more than 13,000 are for translation of agendas up to the IRC meeting of May 27th and other website content based on the translation requirements of the California Elections Code. The actual year to date amount includes paid invoices from January through May and a small surcharge for recovery of countywide costs. The projected amount includes the charges for June. Under other services and supplies, there is a new expenditure category for advertising which includes the cost of posting Facebook ads to promote the IRC education tour sessions in June and invoices included with the agenda materials. We've also included postage costs for printing and mailing hard copies of the IRC agenda materials from November 2020 through March of this year. Invoices are included with the agenda materials. Staff continues to review and validate invoices on an ongoing basis and reconcile with charges in Oracle monthly. On a final note, the county's fiscal new year began on July 1st, and maybe it's not too late to wish everyone a happy fiscal new year. As of agenda publication, there have been no actual charges to the redistricting budget in the first month of the new fiscal year. As I mentioned previously, the county's year end closing process is currently underway. Unexpended amounts from the prior fiscal year will be rolled over and reflected in the next monthly budget update along with any actuals for July. This concludes the monthly budget status update for ongoing transparency and accountability over the use of public funds. Subject to your questions, I will now turn back to Chairman Bain. Thank you very much, Nicole. Much appreciated again. David, are there any requests from the public to speak on this item? No request in advance of today's meeting. If any member of the public present would like to address the commission on this item, please raise a virtual hand now. Not seeing any requests to speak. That concludes public comment on this item, Chair Bain. Thank you, David. Any clarifying questions or comments from commissioners on this informational item? Commissioner Inman. Um, so I was just looking at the legal expenses. And so if we continue with the 30,000, 
per month max value, I guess is what that is. That'll be depleted by December, the end of December, I believe. And so if we actually go into January, we're gonna have to find more funding potentially. I just, if I read the numbers right, but that's assuming we stay at that 30,000 max. Is that correct? Through the chair, Commissioner Inman, if we get to that point, we would look at other resources that might be available and other um, items in the budget. I think um, this was one of the um, considerations of the ad hoc committee in identifying uh, discretionary contingency, contingency funds as well. Okay. Okay. And I can address that somewhat. There was a cap also on the total for their their uh, their uh, line item. Even over the thirty thousand per month, then. Uh, I think it was a total of, and I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think there was a total amount that they could not go over. So. Okay. Well, we'll ask staff. Uh, commissioners to look into that and get back to us about it because it's a fair point, Commissioner, and, and that's certainly not the time we want to be facing a crisis on it. So <laughs> thank you for raising it. Any other questions or comments? Excellent. Nicole, thank you again. Uh, I don't mean to rush the work. It really is important and the transparency is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Um, thank you. Moving on, uh, item 12, I believe, on discussing future agenda items. Unless there's serious objection, I'm going to ask commissioners to just bear in mind what we've been discussing and be in touch with staff if there are any specific items you want to ensure are on the August 12th agenda beyond what we've already discussed. Thank you for your agreement on that. Much appreciated. Moving on to item 13. The Commission's Legislative Ad Hoc Committee. Okay, it, may, it may be worthwhile to go through the exercise of asking if there are any members of the public who would like Absolutely to Absolutely right. Item. Thank you. If, they, if there are, please raise a virtual hand at this time. And not seeing any requests to speak, that concludes public comment on the item. And forgive my interruption, Chair Pam. Not at all. David, you saved me again. And as always, uh, for members of the public, if you do have thoughts on future agenda items outside our regular meetings, do feel free to send an email and staff will make sure to bring it to our attention. Much appreciated, thank you. On to item 13, update from the Legislative Ad Hoc Committee. Again, a reminder that the committee was formed to develop legislative or other recommendations. Uh, the most active remains to report back to us with recommended options for action, including but not limited to the actions regarding the former bill SB 594. Let me invite Commissioner Russ to take the floor and provide us a brief update ahead of our closed session discussion. Right, thank, you, Chair. thank you, Chair. There have been no major uh, new developments since our last meeting, but even though the legislature is in recess uh, uh, since mid-July until mid-August, we still are uh, continue close coordination with stakeholders. Um, uh, for example, the um, Los Angeles County uh, CRC and uh, and even our legislative staff staffs. Um, we also have uh, received a very uh, very favorable. Uh, response from PANA, the uh, Partnership for um, Advancement of New Americans, that they were that they were requesting a, a meeting with Senator Atkins um, and uh, supporting our uh, proposal for an extension of, of the timeline. So I, I'm I'm uh, pleased to report that there still is work going on, even though the legislature is in is in um, is in recess. And that that concludes my report, sir. Thank you. And I, again, thanks to you and other members of the ad hoc, in particular, Commissioner Diaz for her never ending efforts to get an appointment settled. And we did have that meeting with assembly member Weber. Again, much appreciated for that. With that, the next item on the agenda is item 14. Sure, which I'm, requires, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm gonna sorry. ask for your uh, indulgence one more time while I- David, I'm sorry you did. Please go ahead. Any members of the public who would like to address the commission on the ad hoc? Uh, committee report. Please raise a virtual hand at this time. I'm not seeing any request to speak. That concludes public comment on this item, Chair Bam. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I apologize. I was lumping that together with comment on the next agenda item. And that, of course, is incorrect. So 
The next item is item 14, which requires the commission to recess and convene in closed session to discuss existing litigation in the case of the legislature of the state of California versus V. Padilla 2020. Commissioners have been emailed a link to the separate Zoom meeting for the closed session. Before we break, however, David, are there any requests from the public to speak on this agenda item? Not in advance of tonight's meeting, Chair Baim. If there are any members of the public present who would like to address the commission on this item, please raise virtual hand at this time. And not seeing any requests to speak, that concludes public comment on this item, Chair Baim. Thank you very much for that. Uh, for those members of the public who may be leaving us now, thanks as always for joining. The next meeting of the County of San Diego's Independent Redistricting Commission will be held on Thursday, August 12th, beginning at 4 p.m. at the Mira Mesa Senior Center, 8460 Mira Mesa Boulevard in San Diego. Uh, that, will also, that meeting will also include our first public hearing, the same date, August 12th, in the same venue, the Mira Mesa Senior Center. We will suspend the IRC regular meeting just before we begin the public hearing promptly at 5.30 p.m. And we welcome any member of the public from that area or any part of the county to attend. Further details on virtual and in-person participation in both meetings will be available in advance on our website. We look forward to you joining us. I now ask commissioners to leave this meeting and join the separate Zoom meeting for the closed session. This public virtual meeting of the IRC will continue for any reportable actions out of the closed session. During this time and until that closed session concludes, staff will put up a slide notifying the public that the commission is meeting in closed session. We'll take a five minute break before we start that closed session. Thank you for the slide. So we will start the closed session at 9.51. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you in just a few minutes.
Hi, Commissioner Brown, can you hear me? Oh, you're muted. Okay, let's see. Mute. Commissioner Brown, I think you're muted. Can you unmute? Yeah, I thought I just did, sorry. Yeah, I think when you are muted, I muted you. Okay. <laughs> Apologies for that. Um, okay. I think you're supposed to be in the other closed session meeting. This is back on the regular Zoom. Okay, so how do I get to that information? Um, so that's in the Outlook invitation um, and Liberty says that she'll go ahead uh, and send you the invite okay. again. Let, let me check that then. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, I'll leave this and I'll go look in Outlook, okay? Sounds good. Let us know if you have any issues.
Good evening, everyone. Thank you. This concludes the business before the Independent Redistricting Commission tonight. The next meeting of the IRC will be Thursday, August 12th at 4 p.m. This meeting is adjourned at 11.18 p.m. Thank you.